And we're live. Hey, Andy. Hello and welcome to the Legends of Tabletop podcast. We're getting ready to do our third Core Thulu playtest, which is a double playtest again because Kevin has written his own scenario. So we're going to playtest both of those things, I guess. <laughs> um, not written for Core Thulu specifically, but written for Call of Cthulhu. You guys all figured it out. Um, I'll say this on the front end so I don't have to edit it back later. Um, because it is a play test, it's, uh, there's more than likely a little bit more meta conversation happening, uh, as things come up or we have to talk about some of the finer points or whatever. Um, all the other games have been great and a lot of fun, uh, but there is a little bit more of uh, the outside meta chatter that we're, that we're keeping in. So, uh, hopefully that doesn't bother you. And I'm going to kick it over to Kevin and let him tell us what's going on. Okay, so this one is called the uh, 50,000 Watt Blowtorch. Um, it's taking place in Pittsburgh. So for the introduction, it's um, on November 2nd, 1920, KDK Radio in Pittsburgh broadcast the Harding-Cox presidential election results, widely regarded as the world's first radio broadcast. So Pittsburgh in the 1920s was crowded. It was a crowded, dirty place. The Roaring Twenties would be the pinnacle for the money class, whether old or new. For the employees of the steel and coal magnets, the romance and benefits of industrialization would have to wait until the end of the Great Depression and the mass mobilization of World War II. So what we're going to do is we're going to start um, on the evening of November 2nd. Uh, as I said, there's been a lot of talk, uh, oh, a lot of talk, a lot of um reports in the local newspapers in Pittsburgh about this uh, this company, KDK Radio, and uh, they're going to do a the first kind of public broadcast. Um, there's been, you know, kind of radio testing radio broadcasts earlier, but this is the kind of the first one for mass consumption uh, for the, the rest of the population. Uh, so how we're going to start this out is we're going to have all of our players at a local speakeasy, which I was kind of happy when I looked at the date. So I think I told everybody that the uh, prohibition had uh, gone into effect earlier in 1920. Uh, so we're in November 1920. So if it's a Cthulhu game, you always got to have a speakeasy around. So I was happy those dates kind of kind of uh, fell into place for that. Uh, so for some introductions, let's go ahead and kick it over to maybe John first to tell us about his game. All right, I'm going to be playing Travis Hayes. He's an ex-soldier, private first class, uh, was in the First World War. Uh, he's 23, he's short, short brown hair, stubble, kind of hollow-eyed and gaunt. Uh, he works down at the docks. And um, he is, so as we sort of play with the mechanics for things, um, he's got a permanent level of trauma at Unsettled. Uh, I also debated on whether or not making that just like a life shaper thing. Um, but we haven't, since we haven't done any campaign play yet or really sort of delve too deep into character stuff. Uh, I just made it a permanent level of drama. He does, he does have two life shapers. We'll see if they come up. His versus war experience. His belief is that life is cheap and his coping mechanism is drug addiction. He is addicted to morphine, which he takes out of a little brown dropper bottle. <laughs> All right, so next we'll go over to Kurt. Uh, my character is Hugh Joshi. He is 26 years old. He's a criminal. He's actually a drug dealer. Um, I'll just give away his life shaper right away. It's get people high and get that money is basically what he does. <laughs> um, also, he tries everything that he has before he gives it to his clientele because he wants to make sure that they're getting the best possible high so not only does he want to make money but he also wants people to have uh sweet relief whatever in form that comes into uh he's about six foot ten very scrawny but kind of uh um but got, it has that kind of like wiry muscle um very kind of sneaky kind of dude for being what did I say? I said I'm at five ten. Did I say six ten? Yeah, you yeah. Six ten. That's why. Sorry, <laughs> work's been a long day, so I apologize to anyone right now that's listening to this. Um, but no, he's five ten. He's a little wiry, and uh, 
he's got that smile on his face like you will never be able to trust this man even though <laughs> even though he wants to get you high uh yeah not to be trusted um he has uh did we talk about stats or are we just kind of are we just I mean, kinda kinda if you want to, we, nah, we, i'm not gonna worry about that no yeah okay. um, i pretty much gave you all that you really need to know for right now <laughs> all right jesse I am playing Michael Francis. He is a uh, 43-year-old teacher. Uh, He mostly works in community schools, and uh, he specializes in electronics. Uh, He kind of had a fascination with uh, electric cars for a little while, worked for uh, Baker Automotive up in Vermont. And when that kind of went south, he uh, he moved... uh, he moved south and uh, ended up becoming a teacher. And uh, his life shaper is invention uh, as a goal. So he's always kind of uh, upset that he's never made it big and he's never really made it on. He's kind of stuck in this job. So he always wants to make something or discover something that will propel him to the next level. He also has a little bit of a fascination with ham radios. So. <laughs> Okay, good. So, um, to to set this up, so in downtown Pittsburgh, there is a um, there's a speakeasy that kind of everybody kind of knows about. I guess quote quote unquote everybody. Uh, it's called Froggies, and they the owner of the tavern has kind of let it be known that he. I guess he wouldn't say he has a hookup. That seems to be anachronistic. But he has a friend who uh, was able to get him a radio. So he's very excited that he has uh, a radio So to listen to this broadcast. As I said in the papers over the past few weeks, there's been lots of stories about this historic event of you know the first broadcast, things like that. Um, so the fact that Hugh and Travis... Um, my assumption would be that maybe you do kind of know each other. Maybe you aren't. Maybe Hugh isn't Travis's, you know, main kind of guy. But I'm, I'm assuming just that you would know each other. Um, he hooks me up. We run in the same circles. Okay, so that, so there is that that tighter relationship there. And then obviously for Michael, uh, he's heard word of you know, the, the fact that Froggies is going to have a radio. So, you know, just from his background, he's going to be interested to be there to listen to it. Now, so whether you know Hugh and Travis, other than just the fact that maybe, I don't know, maybe if Mike was a local at Froggies also, or if he's just coming in new because he heard, you know, somebody say that that, that guy had a radio and he wanted to go listen. Hmm. Um. Yeah, we'll say, you know, he, uh, he appreciates, uh, froggy's uh, attempt to kind of stay current with technology and uh, and maybe even michael's kind of helped him out a little bit set up some of his stuff so yeah he probably he's not a, a low he's not a frequent visitor but he's there often enough okay so the, the, you guys would have seen each other and my assumption whenever we talk about things like this when we play a game and it's a speakeasy right it, it's not like you're just so anybody's walking off the street. So I think everybody probably knows right, yeah. everybody, right? There's that little extra level of security that, you know, you're just not getting, you know, people walking by and coming in. So the chances are that you kind of, you got, you got, you guys kind of all know each other just from the fact that you want to make sure there's not a fed sitting next to you when you go in <laughs> kind of thing. Well, would it be a fed? I guess it is a fed, but I don't know if that's, t- but yeah, so a cop next to you, you want to make sure that, yeah, exactly. So, you know, make sure you don't want to get pinched. So, um, you know, you guys are in, it's it's early evening. Uh, you guys are in Froggy sitting down. Uh, the the owner of the place, oh, what's a good name for him? We'll just call him Steve. So Steve, Stevie, the owner of Froggy's is there. There is actually, used to be a Froggy's in Pittsburgh, and I forget what the guy who used to own it was named. Mm. We'll, just say it's, we'll just say it's Steve. Um, so Steve's there and, uh, behind the, behind the bar, you know, you see the stereotypical, like kind of like the the dome, but like that, that cathedral door shaped wooden thing with some stuff on it behind the, behind the bar. So he's all, he's all very excited and he's been 
walking by, you know, he's been rubbing down the bar and then, you know, wiping down the, um, wiping down the radio. So he, he looks at his watch uh, and all of a sudden he shouts to everybody and say, um, okay, everybody, the uh, broadcast is going to start. Uh, I got this little baby from uh, one of my regulars who was a little, uh, a little behind on his tab. So he did me a favor and gave me one of these, one of these uh, radios that everybody's been talking about. Uh, so in a minute, we'll go ahead and turn it on to, um, to, to listen to this, whatever they're talking about for the election. Uh, also, this will stand out as a reminder that if you fall back, if you fall behind on what you owe me, always make sure you come up and pay in a reasonable time so you don't have to give me any kind of new super duper thing. You know, you can just pay your tab. I'll take I'll take cash as, as well as in kind trade. So always make sure you're uh, you're up on your uh, on your tab. Uh, and he says uh, to celebrate this and me being in a good mood, uh, we'll give a round of drinks on the house for everybody who's here. So you know, he points over to a waitress, and then she starts going around and asking people, you know, what what they want since. Uh, since Stevie's giving everybody a, a free one on the house right before the broadcast starts. So she comes over and just asks you uh, what you guys pick your poison for today. Uh, what would you guys like or for this evening? What would you guys like? Uh, whiskey sour. She looks over to Hugh. How about you, Hugh? How about you, Hugh? Sorry, I'm going to help myself. <clears throat> uh, bourbon on the rocks. Okay, and then she looks over to Michael, uh, just you know, raises her eyebrow. I don't know, she would be writing it down. She's probably remembering it. It's not that much of an order, so. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, uh, I'll just do a uh, rum and coke. Okay, so she'll walk back over to the bar, start getting those, um, getting those served up. She'll come back over and give you your drinks, and then right after she gives you your drinks, she walks back over to Stevie and's kind of you know just leaning against the bar. So he puts his hands up. And says, "Okay, everybody, be quiet. Um, I'm going to turn on the radio. Let's, you know, let's hear what's going on with this. Uh, hopefully, we'll all remember where we were uh, on this momentous occasion. Just don't let anybody know the name of the place. Uh, don't want to, don't want to get too much, uh, too much publicity. But you know, let your friends know that that we're here and uh, we were we were the first ones to let you hear this. So he turns on the radio. And what I'm going to have you guys do real quick is I'm going to send you a quick link." If you go ahead and just play that um, real quick, it's like 30 seconds or so. So once you're done playing that, let me know, and then we'll keep going from there. All right. I'm going to have to rip this so I can add it into the podcast later. <laughs> it's not going to help anybody watch it now, but <laughs> I'm assuming it's the broadcast. Yeah, it's just like a 30-second clip at the beginning of the broadcast. I was hoping the ads weren't popping up at the beginning because every time I clicked on it, there yeah. was, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was good. Okay, cool. Kurt, you done? Yeah, I was like streamer. That's not a good commercial. I don't remember that little thing. <laughs> I don't remember them being around in the 1920s. Okay, so that that's the beginning of it. The um, broadcast goes on. Uh, they're just reading out the different um, election results from each of the states they're getting in. But after you hear that. Everybody make me a psyche roll. Oh, fuck, we're starting right with that. <laughs> <laughs> Any yeah. dice? Oh, come on. This will frame it for moving forward. So. One, two, two. So I got a two. Cool. Okay. One, two. <laughs> <laughs> Quickest Corthulhu game ever. Right. Everybody drops dead. Uh, I had a five, four, three. Okay. So while this broadcast is playing, Hugh's sitting there drinking, um, you know, just listening to the results. And then, you know, there's a bit of, you know, mum not mumbling, but, you know, people were talking, you know, there's, you know, why, you know, this is, this is amazing. You know, uh, 
normally we would have to wait to the next day to kind of get some of this information. Uh, so, and, you know, he was just sitting there drinking, but also Michael and Travis, while they're listening, they just have this weird feeling of like, there's like a distracted noise kind of in the back of their mind. It's like a really low kind of buzz or kind of hum. So I'm assuming Michael, Michael just thinks, okay, well, I, you know, this is kind of what happens when I go to turn on my ham radio, I plug it in. I'm also t touching the metal table while mm -hmm. I touch my ham radio or Travis is all, when I say buzz, Travis is probably thinking this feels like I got a bad buzz from you know something <laughs> so it's you know it's that both kind of feeling that you're both having um he sticks his finger in his ear kind of like whirls it around like maybe it's tinnitus you know because he gets a he gets yeah. tinnitus he has tinnitus from the wars sometimes like usually it's not too bad but then sometimes it like just kind of like you know flares up oh and i forgot to say so the the difficulty level on that was a three so that <laughs> would be a no I'm just trying to scroll down for what the. I got a no but. I missed by yeah. one. Yeah, so I think so. No but. Uh, so the no but would be, this is kind of cheating, but so, <laughs> I guess for both of you, you know, so Travis kind of realizes it, it's not really an intense thing. It's kind of that in the background. It's a bit annoying, and as you said, you, you think it might be the tinnitus. Michael says, you know, it kind of feels whenever he's. You know, messing around with electrics, right? So you're you're interested in that kind of thing. So I'm sure there's been a few times in your life you've been shocked, or you turn something on and you're testing, and you can hear it, and it it kind of has that feeling. So the both of you kind of know that this kind of feels like that when we've had it happen to us before, but it's really not. There's something a bit off that it doesn't fit right in with that, but you know it's there thereabouts. But this still doesn't feel like it's the normal thing whenever you're having that kind of reaction. So he, he lean, Travis leans over towards Hugh and says, uh, Hey, uh, Hey Hugh, you, you, you hear it, Nat? And he's, you know, again, he's kind of like his finger in his ear. Is that supposed to make that noise? Uh, Hugh smiles wide at Travis and, and Hugh's like, no, I didn't hear it. But if you want to hear it, I got something for you. <laughs> <laughs> And he, he he looks at Michael. I don't know how well we know you. And he's like, I yeah, no, I yeah, maybe. I'm, it's probably fine. I know. It's 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 probably it's probably just uh, some feedback from the radio in a little uh, a little uh, electrostatic in the air. I we're, it's fine. Do you, you know about this stuff? Uh, uh, uh yeah 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 yeah. I actually I I helped Stevie uh, Stevie set this one up. Oh. Well, good on you. You should keep them happy more often. We'll get some more free drinks out of them. <laughs> Michael, did you program that? Did you program that so like everyone can hear that? You're you're doing like the microwave thing where like you send out the vibes to get people to you know vote against Hardy or something. What are you doing? What are you, is, uh, no, you no, 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 no. That's 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 all. That's not that's not real. That no. Hmm. Speaking of free drinks, uh, the waitress over at the bar, uh, we'll call her Betty. So Betty looks over to Stevie, and she's kind of, she's kind of doing the same things that Michael and Travis are doing. So she's, you know, sticking her finger in her ear, you know, shaking her head a bit. So she shouts, she shouts over to Stevie. I think you got swing. I think you got swindled by Jensen on this. The thing's broken or something. It's making my head hurt. Uh, I, I, and, I, I, go ahead. I, I I was thinking, I'll, I'll uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go see if I can uh see if I can go fix this thing. Maybe maybe there's like a loose a loose wire or something. Okay, so uh, Michael walks over. You see Stevie, kind of looking at the radio, twisting a bit of the knob. So of course uh, the volume goes up and down a bit. He's you know <laughs> tuning it back and forth, and he's a little bit of static, and it catches it again. Uh, so he turns back around and looks at Betty and. Uh, looks out and so it look it seems to him that it's just betty and then michael and travis you know everyone else just seems to be kind of sitting there talking about it listening to the results seeing what they are so he shouts again and goes uh okay uh everything seems to be all right but uh i'm still in a good mood about this this is pretty exciting so another round for everybody uh get over there betty and get everybody around maybe uh 
walking around a bit it will make you feel a bit better so she comes back around and she remembers everybody's drink so she comes around and gives everybody uh uh another free round and as michael's walking over to stevie she kind of hands she can't she hands michael his as he's walking over to stevie and she's she's coming back to the other tables for you know travis and you and everyone else um so yeah so michael's over talking to stevie kind of take a looking at it and you know, Stevie says, I, I don't, I don't really hear anything. I seem fine. You know, the only time I hear static is when I'm, you know, tuning it this way or that, but, uh, I don't, I don't think whatever Betty was saying, my head's fine. I don't know about, about you and Travis over there. I don't know how you're feeling. Uh, uh yeah, usually, uh, usually, uh, maybe sometimes like this, uh, you have to have a certain, uh, uh, mental acuity in order for the uh, the sounds <laughs> to, to hit you. <laughs> and then you know he's he's kind of sitting there, so uh, he, he doesn't seem to feel anything. So he's going to do the old IT trick. He's going to unplug it and plug it back in again. Uh, <laughs> you know, you hear the pop. I'm assuming you know whenever you mm. plug something in in 1920, there was a you know that ozone pop when you click it in. Uh, when he pulls it off, you know, there are some grumbles from some of the other uh, patrons of, you know, we, they were just coming to Pennsylvania. You pulled it out. We're going to know, you know, what the results are. So he plugs it back in, um, you know, turns it, tweaks it again for the, the tuning to make sure it's on the right one uh, and turns it up a bit, turns it back down. And he kind of looks at Michael and says, I, I still don't, it still sounds fine to me. What about you? And for Michael and Travis and Betty, you know, that that kind of hum is still there, um, just, you know, very faintly in the background. And when Stevie unplugged it, uh, you know, he, he, he unplugged it. He didn't wait a whole bunch of time because everybody, you know, started yelling about he plugged it back in. But for that three seconds of when it was unplugged, you guys still had that in your head so it didn't go off whenever he unplugged the radio hey travis just sort of shrugs and takes a drink leans back into the chair and you know just kind of says absently uh you know uh, they keep the politics uh you should put uh, put some of that jazz on there that that'd be a lot better says so, while Michael's over there, uh, Stevie's, you know, he's mumbling a bit under his breath about, you know, Jensen, wait till I get a hold of Jensen. I think he took me for a ride on this one. Um, this better not be affecting, <laughs> if we keep playing this, this better not be affecting my customers all the time. Uh, I may have to go back and pull out that tab the, that he was running up. Uh, can't be having it affect, you know, I have people coming in here and he's mumbling under his breath, you know. People have enough problems trying to get here. I staying out of trouble. I don't want uh, all of a sudden yeah, all my uh, all my customers telling everyone else that whenever they come into Froggies, they're getting static in their brain. So, you know, he's still tweaking it. You know, Michael's looking. It doesn't look like there's anything specifically wrong with the the radio. You know, from your experience, you know, you look around the back. You're make looking, make sure the plugs grounded inside of it and into the wall and everything. So, but no, everything at the moment looks fine to you, um, you know, and then and Stevie's just, you know, still kind of sitting there mumbling under his breath about, you know, Jensen and and things like that. And get, wait till I get my hands on him. He hasn't been here for a few days. I wonder if he knew this was going to happen. Um, but as you said, as I said, every, as you said, as I said, everyone else is, seems to be fine. It just seems to be you two and, and Betty that are having that. It's not, it's not to the point where, See, I've never had tinnitus before, but it it it's very low. It's it's distracting because it's it's new. It's like if you have a you know a scratch in your mouth and your tongue's always going toward that kind of thing. It's that kind of thing. It's not affecting you or anything. It just seems to be there and it's it's always there and it's a, you know it's a bit a bit annoying, but it's not stopping you. You know, you can still carry on conversations. You can still go do whatever. Um, but you know, when you're talking, it kind of seems to go away a bit. But you know, whenever it's silent or you know you're thinking about it, the more you think about it. You know, you can kind of feel that little bit in the back of your mind. Okay. Hugh, Hugh leans into Travis and says, 
you know, you got a little buzzing in your head there. I got a little something for you. I got something new. It's called Grandma's Cough Medicine. It's actually a little bit of it's cough syrup mixed with codeine. It'll make that buzz go right away. I I don't know. I don't know if that'll. Um, I mean, you know my uh, my normal concoction. I I don't know. Can it touch that? I, I mean, that's. Uh, what what if what if I make it Grandpa's cough medicine and I put the heroin in it too? <laughs> Actually, he's addicted to the morphine. Oh, morphine. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I switched it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I might be willing to give that a shot. Uh, how how much? How much is a lot of money? <laughs> In the twenties, uh, a nickel, one, <laughs> one wealth. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> one credit, yeah. one credit. Yeah, please. yeah let's just... ten bucks. I don't know. Yeah, I sure. Know. Yeah, let's yeah let's just say that. Yeah, it says for ten for ten. I'll give actually. I'll give it to you for a steal. I'll give it to you for seven dollars. But you got to do it with me. Uh, yeah. Maybe we can he kind of like looks around. Should we? Get probably find a, a spot in here and maybe we'll just maybe we, we can do it later all right sounds good anytime you need to go to the restroom let me know yeah yeah that'll work that if so so the the ten dollars equates to 136 bucks in 2021 nice. um, but obviously maybe travis isn't just getting a hit right he's trying a bit and then if he likes it, then there'll be more of it. So I, yeah, I don't think this is just kind of a one, sh a one shot of <laughs> a taster. This will be more. Yeah, exactly. He'll get the whole. He'll yeah. get the whole bottle. Yeah. Exactly. I also don't know if that's a lot of money or a little of money for drugs. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At first, I, I was know. like, "Oh, 136." I guess that sounds about right. And then Kevin's like, ah, "It's pretty on the cheap side, actually." Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, but you gotta figure like you literally go. And get a whole meal for a nickel, right? Like that's always the right, joke. Yeah. So or a quarter or whatever. So like ten bucks is not an insignificant amount of money. I mean, like oh, what no. was what was weekly salary? Twenty, thirty dollars or some shit, that, right? Like that, and it's not yeah, that ten so, bucks is gonna pay off Hughes mortgage for the next six months, right? <laughs> well, right, because the average salary in the twenties is about eight grand. You know, depending on profession, right? So somewhere between like four and ten. So the so weekly workers, $9 and $15. Yeah. So there you go. It's all week's worth of salary. Yeah. Nice. All right. Yeah. I feel like it's probably a pretty good number. Yep. Yeah. Drug history lesson over. Now <laughs> back to the show. 1920 <laughs> drug history lesson. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was drugs and economics. Look at that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we're not only playing a Corthulhu game, we're also learning. Yeah. Today I learned. <laughs> <laughs> How much drugs on the street would cost back in 1920. <laughs> so the broadcast keeps going. You know, they're going they're going through the all the returns. Uh, yeah. My assumption is th there's not going to be like a, a call on the election. I think Harding did win pretty big. But I'm, he did, I'm yeah. guessing, I'm guessing that you're not going to get those results tonight. You know, it's still, I, I'm guessing getting getting the 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 telegraph results from you know Illinois and Wisconsin and I'm trying to think what else would be states. California was a state down there, yeah. So that that's going to be waiting a while. But you know, so the, it's ongoing and it, you know it's cycling through. It's going back and you know they they're not repeating it because it's all live, but they are rereading some of the inform other information. Um, Everyone else in Froggy's, you know, it was fine. You know, just all chatting, normal stuff. Uh, you know, the, all, the usual regulars are there. Uh, Stevie's still, you know, kind of fiddling with the radio. He's not tweaking the, trying to tweaking the dial as much because, you know, it goes to that, that the other, the actual radio static you hear. But he's kind of looking around on it. Maybe once in a while, Michael gets up, tries to remember something maybe. That he's seen before about you know connections and transistors and whatever and he you know he sits and you know he goes over and starts talking to stevie again because obviously um mike will help stevie get it hooked up before um so let's say he got he got this radio from jensen to cover you know his outstanding tab 
if Michael was the one that helped get it up and running, um, you kind of know you kind of know who Jensen is. You know, he's been in here before. Mm. Uh, maybe you weren't. Maybe Jensen wasn't here while you were. You know, fiddling around with it to get it up and mm -hmm. running previously. But you know who Jensen is. You know, he works for KDKA. Um, so you're looking at it. Maybe you've had some some chats with Jensen in the past about what's going on, what he's been working on. Obviously, mm -hmm. two guys in a in a bar who both at this time are into you know electronics and things like right. that. I guess it would be like, you know, two people in a bar now who work on AI or something, right? There's not that right, many yeah. people that would be in there. So yeah. maybe, you, you know, you guys have chatted about it before, you know, you buy him a drink, he tells you a bit, you, he buys you a drink, you know, you tell him a bit again about that. So maybe you kind of know, you know, and, and Stevie's still complaining about Jensen um, and, you know, looks over you. Do you think, you think I've been taken on this one? Do you think, you think he worked me worked me over and uh, got something out of it? You know, you and you and Travis seemed to, and Betty seemed to be a bit um, whenever that started, but no one else in here seems to be uh, making a big deal about it. I yeah I, I mean I I don't know it could uh, he he could have maybe given you some uh, some defective uh, defective hardware from from the station or something, but uh, but. I, I I don't know. I mean, every, everyone else seems pretty okay. So we'll have to talk to him tomorrow when he comes in. Um, he hasn't been in today, but I'm guessing maybe uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on over in that shed uh, for the radio station. Maybe uh, maybe he got busy. Uh, maybe it was uh, all hands on deck kind of thing. So, but um, you know, I'm sure if I see him tomorrow. I'll mention something to him. And if you're here too, maybe the three of us can get together and chat about it. But uh, Everything else seems to be all right for the minute. Um, just let me and uh, just let me or Betty know if you and Travis want anything else the rest of the night. Uh, seems a bit strange, but uh, it is an, it is an exciting day. You know, I don't think there's probably too many people out there that can say that they they played the first broadcast uh, on the radio. So I will always have that. Maybe I'll get one of those plaques you put up behind the bar. I'll get someone to uh, to make me something fancy to put up there. So uh, once this. Uh, once all this uh, this new uh, amendment goes and gets thrown out eventually, fingers crossed, God willing, maybe I'll turn this place into a tourist destination so people can come take a look. And while he's doing that, you know, Michael's sitting there fidgeting a bit. Uh, Betty comes over and sits down next to Travis. Uh, maybe Hugh, Hugh, Hugh just went... He went for an actual run to the bathroom and not with Travis, but like a proper run. Yeah, to Travis the starts to get up and he's like, "No, no, no, man, I really no, got to go." This is an actual. <laughs> no, yeah, I actually, I actually got to go. I got to go. <laughs> so then Betty sits down next to um next to Travis. You know, uh, Michael's still up. You know, maybe Michael's kind of leaning up against the bar talking to Stevie a bit. Uh, you know that that seemed to be something. I, I wouldn't think Michael would be with Hugh and Travis just shooting the breeze all night, especially mm. if he's got someone else to talk about this radio thing, right? He, he, you know, he'd be leaning up against the bar, you know, drink, you know, talking with him. And uh, Betty kind of sits down next to, to Travis and says, yeah, it's kind of weird, right? Like a weird hum in the background, kind of in your ear. A little yeah, bit I can almost weird. feel it like in my jaw, right? Like it's just, I mean, I, I got, I got this buzz all the time from the war, you know, the, the shells, they just, it's like rain. I mean, I just I hear that all the time, but it, it feels different a little bit. And then, you know, she kind of looks over and says, yeah, it seems really strange, but it just seems to be a couple of us. Everyone else seems to be all right. Um, it is a bit weird, uh, but, you know, so she gets up and kind of does the stereotypical, you know, bumps her hip into you and says, I'll, I'll go grab you another drink. Don't tell Stevie. So she'll go back over and She'll pour one for you. And while Stevie's talking to Michael, she'll pour a shot and give herself a slug and kind of walk <laughs> over and just give, you know, give Travis and uh, give Travis another one. Uh, maybe Hugh's drink is still there. So she just, she kind of just tops you back up and, you know, walks back over and starts working, uh, you know, seeing if anyone else needs anything. Can um, I make an awareness to see? If it seems like other people are being affected by it or not. Yep. Let me go. 
what would that would be? That would be hmm, kind of an easy one, right? Because you know everybody there. Um, you For know, the most part, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Well, you, you, you would know. You, you've seen them before, right? So, you know, that guy, he's usually hammered when he comes in anyway. So, you know, that guy, he, you know, this is the he, he likes his, you know, stuff neat. That guy likes stuff on the rocks. So, you, you know, you've been around and you, you, you understand, you know, you're regular. So you kind of know everybody's interactions, usually how they are. So if anybody was seeing, if anybody was acting a bit out of the ordinary, you would notice because you all, because I'm assuming in a speakeasy, if people start acting weird, everyone else starts staring at him and getting weird because yeah, that guy yeah. pop, you know, so they're all, right. everybody kind of knows how everybody works. So let's say that's kind of an easy, difficult level, okay. difficulty level. That is going to be a seven. So that is a yes and a whole bunch of hands, right? <laughs> mm. Right. It's almost it's almost like because he has the the unsettled, right? So like he always just kind of is sort of aware of his surroundings because of the, the the war background. Like he's just always kind of on guard, I guess. Maybe not paranoia, but you're always you're always scoping out what's going on, right? So yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe if you even when you're not tweaking, you know, you always got that little unsettled. Got to make sure nothing comes up behind me. What's that guy doing? Right, right, right. What she's saying, that kind of thing. So you, you, you a heightened awareness, anyways. So we'll say that you look around and it, it doesn't see. You know, no one else seems to be. You know, kind of shaking their head or you know doing the ear thing or you know just from the low talk, you can hear no one's talking about that. They're just talking about. Um, you know, the, the election returns are, well, this is actually, this is pretty neat that, you know, we're here for this. And, you know, imagine what this thing will do. Uh, maybe they'll start putting baseball games on it, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So it's just, you know, generic talk. So no one else is talking about them having that kind of buzzy feeling or sound. Uh, everyone else seems to be, so it seems just to be the three of you. And we'll say, what would be the and for that? And... Um, I don't know. It's such a low stake sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't have to be related, right? So that, like, that's the that's the thing. Like in combat, usually your ends and butts are going to be related, although they don't have to be to what's happening in the moment, because it's pretty easy to sort of riff off of. Okay. Um, let, let let me be. Let me be. Um, I'm going to steal this to kind of use to my advantage, <laughs> my advantage, because I've been trying to think how to work this next part. So let's say the yeah, the the yes is yeah. You really don't notice. Everyone else seems to, no. You you do know that no one else seems to be raising this point other than sure. you two and Betty. And let's say the and is maybe that that extra heightened stuff that you normally have on every situation makes you think. You know what? Got to make sure we come back tomorrow to double check maybe this is you know something maybe they got a bad you know maybe you got a bad case or a bad batch of rot cut or something hmm. uh maybe froggy's uh supply chains are breaking down maybe you got some bad bathtub bathtub whiskey or whatever but you know maybe you you look over to michael and say it might be an idea might be worth coming back again and checking tomorrow to see uh to see if betty's still having this and maybe see if any of these other all these other guys here see if maybe we we'll ask them tomorrow maybe if they're having the same effect uh that, that little ringing thing that you and i and betty are hearing uh maybe it's not maybe it's not that radio thing maybe it's something uh maybe it's something that uh they're serving us uh but maybe it might be a good idea just to double check you don't know uh, if we if we find out this place is uh going down the tubes on quality uh you might want to find another place to drink i don't want to end up starting drinking some gasoline or you know, wood alcohol in uh, yeah. in my stuff whenever we come in. So he, so since um, since Hugh wasn't didn't feel anything, he switches over to the he you know he grabs Betty like waves her down as she walks by and he's like you know what uh switch me over to bourbon. And uh, so she'll so Hugh was drinking bourbon. What was Michael drinking? Rum and uh, coke. Right? Rum and coke. And then. Yeah. Travis just had whiskey, right? Whiskey sour, yeah. Okay, so um, so uh, Betty says, "Yeah, that's that might be a good idea." Uh, 
but you know some of the other folks around here were drinking the whiskey too but uh maybe it was just that that end of that bottle that i gave you and me uh yeah because she, she snuck a shot she 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 doesn't do a one for you one for me all the time whenever stevie's <laughs> not looking she'll take an you know she'll take a quick slug so uh she, she says yeah i'll go i'll go grab you a bourbon uh and i'll whatever that whiskey was i'll i'll set that aside and we can check that now I'll, I'll see if i get anything out of stevie if you think that might be uh what was causing the issue and she'll go over and make you a, you know pour you some bourbon and uh so you said bourbon on the rocks right or you had whiskey on the rocks i had uh so i don't know how they would serve a whiskey no sour, you said probably you said whiskey straight. sour that's right yeah probably straight right yeah so it's a bourbon sour Meat, as it were yeah so yeah she'll go ahead and she'll go ahead and grab you one and she'll take a quick quick look because you know stevie and michael are still fidgeting around with the radio and she'll mm. come back and give you a drink um, right, he he offers her a, like he lights a cigarette. He shakes one out for her. I'm assuming she's probably working and smoking at the same time. <laughs> people speak, people always smoke. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he just you know flicks off some ash in the ashtray and you know just like he settles in. He waits for Hugh to come back and you know figure maybe we'll we'll go and uh, sample uh, Grandpa's. Uh, cough medicine <laughs> when he comes back yeah so until Hugh come you know maybe maybe Hugh got Hugh went you know and maybe he just got pulled off to the side you know he's chatting with some of the other local I'm assuming people know who Hugh is so maybe mm. he's he's doing some business on the side and he's yeah. just you know walking through chatting with everybody kind of thing um everybody's had taking his own orders yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. So Hugh's up working, so now Betty can sit down and says, "Okay, I've I got everybody all fed and watered. Now uh, we'll let we'll let Hugh go do some of the fertilizer." So she sits down with with Travis in Hugh's seat, you know, sitting there smoking, um, you know, just a bit of idle idle chatter, back and back and forth. Um, so what can we do until Hugh comes back? Uh, to, to, I mean, we can we can pause, I guess, until he comes back. I, I don't. I feel like we've discussed mechanics before, right? Like sometimes we'll do that when somebody has to bounce for a few minutes. But so let's just say you know you guys are there for a few hours. Um, there are, which is you know kind of shocking to realize now, but there are actually night runs of newspapers at this time so you would get right. the morning paper and you would get the paper at night which i always thought was crazy but uh mm -hmm. so maybe while you guys are sitting there um chatting hughes doing hughes uh going through the motions doing his business you know uh maybe michael comes back sits down a bit uh chatting with betty and and travis you know he'll go back up when he wants to grab another drink and you know, uh, you know, we'll look at Steve again. Stevie seemed to be—he's kind of settled in right now. He's not completely perturbed about the fact that you, the three of you, have got this weird thing because to him, he's got nothing going on. He's fine. All the rest of his customers are—you know—no one else has said anything. Maybe he's thinking, you know, Stevie's thinking. Well, I know Betty. Betty likes to, you know, take a few shots here and there. So maybe she. I mean, we've been a bit busy tonight. So maybe there's one for you. One for me. He's gone a little bit further than normal. Uh, and he says, well, Travis is Travis, right? So he kind of knows what Travis is up to. Uh, any good bartender or owner of a bar knows what his, his loyal customers are usually up to going on. So he's like, ah, that just might be something that Travis has to deal with. You know, he knows your past history of being in the war. And maybe that's just been exacerbated by, you know, some of the stuff you do. So he's like, ah, man, it's just probably Travis. Uh, and then Mac Michael, he's, he's like, well, you know, Maybe there's some kind of weird, maybe Michael was experimenting at home, you know, maybe his ham radio is a bit on the fritz, maybe got a bit of a jolt, you know, every time Stevie unplugged and plugged in the, the radio, you know, he felt that little thing. So maybe he's like, maybe Michael just got a little bit extra when he was doing it. So he's not completely distracted. And he's still happy that, you know, he, he could be part of this. And, you know, I had a radio and everybody listened to the radio at my joint. Um, but so... You know the 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 nighttime newspaper comes in so this is you know a few hours afterwards um and so what he what we were saying is you went to um you actually did go to the bathroom for you know to the bathroom 
Travis was going to get up and follow you. And you're like, no, 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 I, I actually have to go to the bathroom. Um, and while you were walking back, obviously you probably know some of the other locals and the locals, the, the regulars know you also. So maybe you were doing a bit of business while you were walking back to the table with some of the other people. Uh, Betty sat down and was chatting with Travis um, about what was going on and just having a smoke. And Michael is up, you know, back and forth talking to Stevie, looking at the radio. So now if you guys are, if my, if Hugh works his way back to the table, um, Betty gets up, you know, looks over to Travis, you know, thanks for the talk and thanks for the, thanks for the cigarette and, you know, kind of walks back to the bar. Um, and then I don't know if Hugh and Travis want to, want to do anything right now or. Hey, just see, he, he looks up at him. Um, you know, he wink, winks at the Betty when she leaves. I feel like they probably flirt all the time. Yeah. Um, and he says, I mean, it took you long enough. What the, what the hell, man? I thought you were just going to take a piss. Sorry, it turned out to be a little bit more than that, if you really want to know. <laughs> All right, man. I mean, are you, uh, I mean, do you want to go back and, uh, you know? Oh, hell yeah. The, the cough medicine? Of I feel, uh, <laughs> I feel a. Uh, well, something coming on. I know, and he puts his hand to your head, boy. <laughs> it doesn't. You don't look very well, and he says it really loud so everyone else can hear. And then he kind of like tries to like shuffle you off, like he's like a caring <laughs> friend. Hey, Mike, uh, hold the table. Yeah, we'll we'll be right back. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. So m m maybe Michael, you know the the evening the evening run of. The Pittsburgh Post Tribune Gazette comes in, um, so maybe Michael grabs a copy of it. You know, Stevie has a copy. Michael grabs a copy. And he's just reading it, and obviously the big headlines about the so far the results they've had back from the election, and then you know the big story about um, about this historic night. You know, the first ever radio broadcast, KDK Radio, and it's just going over some of the you know the details of the company and monitor just went off um details of the company and and things like that so it's just kind of a rundown of uh, of some of the uh, some of the news um so michael's reading that and obviously he's trying to see if they say anything exciting in this in this article about the broadcast um and then maybe travis and hugh go back um to the bathroom uh i don't think hugh was here for the and from your yes and right John, I think we rolled that separately, right? Uh, I think he had gotten up yeah. at that point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so Kurt, uh, Travis was kind of checking everyone else out to see if anyone else was having, you know, this this little humming buzzing noise, other than Michael and him and Betty. Um, so while you were out talking to everybody, you know, you kind of you guys all kind of know the regular. So Travis didn't really see anything. Everyone else seemed to be talking about the broadcast and the election results and all that kind of stuff. So no one really was like sticking their finger in the air in their ear or, or saying anything about any else about it. So it just seemed to be the three of them. But also what Travis was thinking was maybe it was maybe, maybe go to maybe froggy or maybe froggy, maybe Stevie got a bad batch. He was drinking whiskey. You were drinking bourbon. So he switched over to whiskey or he switched over to bourbon uh, and we also said, you know, Betty likes to take a slug every once in a while when she's making drinks. So the two of them said, maybe, maybe this bad batch of, hopefully it's not bathtub whiskey. So they put that whiskey aside. So what Trav said is maybe it's a good idea to come back tomorrow just to see if anyone else, any of the people here that come back tomorrow, whether they say they have any issues or if it goes away or if anyone else says anything, because obviously you don't want to be hanging out at a speakeasy where, you know, they're giving you. Um, you know, whiskey with diesel in it kind of thing. So he's interested to see tomorrow. That was his and is um, let's come back tomorrow to, to check on everything. So I don't know if Travis says to you, uh, you know, he, you know, he has it, you don't, but it might be a good idea to for us to circle back tomorrow, see what's going on. You know, this is a good, this is a good, um, this is a good base of operations for Hugh also. So he doesn't want to be, you know, known to hang out at the, at the bar that's poisoning everybody. So. Yeah, I think when they go off on, you know, off on their own, then he, you know, kind of says, you know, you know, I, I'm not much, you know, all the stuff that you just said, you know, I, I don't know if so, this whiskey was any good, you know, I made the switch, 
you know, I'm, I'll probably be here tomorrow. This is normally where I come anyway, so. Yeah. And he was, he was like, thinks to himself, he's like, oh, whiskey with diesel. That's not a bad idea. That kind of thing, you know. <laughs> he's always, <laughs> anything that sounds like different, he's just like, I bought for it. Not only to take it, but to sell it. So should we make uh, drug tolerance rolls? You probably should like. Yeah, let's do that because you guys are going back. What so it's we... cough medicine with codeine and morphine in it. <laughs> <laughs> what would that be against? Health, I'm assuming, right? Uh, it would probably be a health roll. I think yeah. we both actually have drug tolerance as a skill, so we'd add that as well. Yep. Okay. Um, let's say that is – do we make that a four? I it's probably at least, right? Well, I mean, yeah, I'm an so, addict, so I don't know, right? Like, it, maybe that's easy. That, that's, that's what I was thinking the offset was, is, you know, this isn't your first rodeo. But I have the thinking, skill, though, right? Yeah. Like, that's the... Yeah, that's what, that would help you get past that. So yeah. have, having it be a four, I think, is probably a good idea regardless, because, you know, it should still be a hard roll, because it's codeine mixed with fucking heroin. So, like, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Not not exactly the easiest pair to put together, plus the cough medicine. Yeah, let's say four then. That's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got a four. I nailed it exactly <laughs> with my mm. drug tolerance. I rolled a three. I, I, I got an eight. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> nice. Uh, just plays to my character. It's like, pff, this is nothing, you know. Okay, so we've got we've got Travis got a four so that's a yes but mm -hmm. something negative and then Hugh is <laughs> a yes and by quite a bit um let's say the the yes but unless john you can think of anything let's say you were expecting if you were taking something you know normally whenever you do something it kind of numbs the pain right so you're you're probably doing a lot of this because of all the, all the stuff that happened in the war and that's kind of like your coping mechanism right so you can mm -hmm. turn off turn all that stuff off whenever you do something so let's maybe say the butt is for this thing you know all your normal things that affect you that set you on edge i've all kind of got blocked out but let's just say this this weird stuff that's happened tonight it's not that it's getting amplified now but it's still there so usually have a bit of peace of mind whenever you do something um but now you have peace of mind but there's this other part that's still there niggling at you and you're not happy about that because the only reason you do all this stuff is you know to try to drown all that out but it seems to be you know that that's still kind of in the back of your mind a bit okay what would be the and for Hugh? so anything kurt you can think of i, th I think for me it would be like the fact that I noticed that, you know, um, he just keeps like doing that thing where he just he keeps playing with his ear and he's just like, whoa, this must be something that's just really affecting him because it's like he does the thing and then he's like, he you can tell Travis is waiting for something to happen. And then all of a sudden he does that thing again where he kind of puts his finger in his ear and just kind of shakes that out again. And he's like, whoa, this man needs needs something a little bit more hardcore or mm. something is really affecting him. Okay. So do we want to have you guys play that out a bit or did you, we just want to have that at, you know, if would, would Travis give his re I'm assuming Travis would give his review of the product, right? Cause it's yeah, something yeah. new. Maybe, maybe let's do that a bit of, yeah, so to you, this, this seems like it's working, but there's that part that's pissing you off because it's not 100% working. And I'm assuming Hugh is feeling pretty good. He's flying pretty high, so he thinks everything's really good, but he does notice that Travis still seems to be – he would see Travis in a good state previously with other stuff, and he sees that he's not in that state right now. Yeah, I feel like instead of being mellow, he's a little bit maybe a little bit more agitated because he's almost like he's fixated on the noise now. And he's like, hey, man, I, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the morphine usually, 
you know, it usually mellows me out, right? Like it's just, just it, it, it calms me down and, you know, I, I can sleep, but, it, you know, wiggles his ear again. He's like, I, 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 all I can hear is that, that fucking noise. I, I it's, man, this, this is, this is not doing what I thought it was going to do. Like, I, I, are you, are you sure about this? He looks at you. Like he, Hugh looks at Travis. He's like, "I'm telling you, it's, it's those brainwaves, man. I'm telling you, it's those, it's that radio, man." He, I, I don't, I don't know if I trust that Michael, man. He, he, I think he might have just set something off, man. And I know what happened to him too, but maybe, maybe it's an accident. Maybe it's one of those things where it's like, now everybody's going to be set off. Maybe we should just get out of here. I don't, I don't really trust this place. If that's going to be happening, I, I don't know. I mean, I. I just, I just wanted, I just wanted to like fucking get a drink and just like chill out a little bit and then go home and pass out. I mean, it's like every other night, right? It's the same thing. You work, drink, a little bit of morphine. It's fine, right? Like, I mean, it's just, it's a living. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, but like the grandpa's cough medicine, I mean, you should be, you should be flying on cloud nine right now. It seems like you're ready to like throw a scrum, man. I don't, I don't, I don't trust that at all. Man, I don't know. And he like, you know, starts like rubbing his face and just, like is a little bit more agitated than maybe he normally is. Let's say, okay, so you guys have said that. Uh, Hugh looks to be happy, right? He's feeling good. Oh heck yeah! Yeah, he loves so it. He, he's yeah. feeling good. <laughs> so he's like, yeah. I, yeah. He's probably feeling, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, one of my, one of my regular customers isn't, but I don't think it's necessarily because of Grandpa's cough medicine. I think, I think I'm onto a winner here with this. Um, but you know, there, there is still that little bit of thing, and you know, saying, you know, m maybe Michael was involved in, in, maybe Michael was messing around with something. Maybe he crossed some wires over there. Him and Stevie did something. Um, let's have. Everybody decide. You know, not everybody decide. So, obviously, Travis. Travis is you know talking to Betty. You know he wants to come back tomorrow uh, to check out what's going on. And obviously, Hugh. After that discussion, Hugh's going to want to also. You know, you don't want to be involved with with a place that's going to you know scare away your regulars or anything like that. Um, and then Michael. Michael's still up at the bar talking to Stevie. So maybe Stevie says to him, you know, he's still mumbling a bit about about the radio and stuff. And he says, hey, Michael, why don't you do me a favor? Why don't you come back tomorrow? Um, and we'll see it when you come back if you if you still have got that 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 ringing stuff going on. Uh, everything seems to be all right with the radio. Like I said, maybe we'll we'll see if Jensen comes back in. But why don't you do me a favor and come back tomorrow? Um, we can take a look at this again, turn it back on uh, or turn it back on again tomorrow whenever the broadcast goes and we'll um we'll check and see if it has any other issues see if that's happening again um and just for for you guys the the broadcast schedule that kdk said is they were going to do some broadcasts tonight of the election results actually i should just remember this and they said tomorrow they were going to continue the election results so yeah obviously you're not going to know even if harding won big uh, you're not going to yeah. have all the results so they're going to have some results tomorrow. So maybe Stevie mm. says to Michael, why don't you come back tomorrow? We'll turn it back on again when the – we'll keep it going tomorrow when the other results come back. It, it, we'll see if there's any kind of the same effect kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, bring, uh, I'll, I'll bring some of my, my tools and, 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 and stuff with me so that we can uh, maybe kind of narrow this down. Yeah, make sure you bring that wrench. So if we see Jensen come back and we find out he's trying to <laughs> – trying to take advantage of me we'll give him we'll give him a big you, you hold the wrench and i'll get the i'll get the tab out of him i'll get my, i'll get my collection uh, so, i got i got i got a little uh a little uh portable jacob's ladder maybe we can maybe we can use that out of it <laughs> okay so um maybe so you you know you guys are sitting there drinking maybe you know a couple more drinks the rest of the night uh, i'm assuming maybe travis and hugh aren't really slugging back too many more drinks after after the grandpa's <laughs> cough, medicine. I'm smoking up a storm now. Yeah, <laughs> off and away. You know, some of the some of the regulars leave. You know, Betty comes back over and sits down, and ch starts chatting with you guys. You know, Michael's kind of up and down, talking to Stevie, coming back. You know, he, he's talking to Stevie because of all that stuff. But you know, he also sits with you guys a bit, and you you just some chatting and some small talk. So, unless there's anything 
specific do you guys want to chat about? Um, I was going to say maybe everybody kind of just starts drifting out and going home. So first of all, is there anything that you guys are chatting or is it just the normal bar talk, waitress sitting next to you, that kind of thing? Well, so they, I, like meta wise, I think I feel like we should probably bring Jesse in more. So like as, as we're all kind of like sitting there, he's like, you know, fidgeting. He's kind of like, you know, flicking the end of the cigarette. Uh, ash is just like falling all over the table and he's like uh so what's uh so so what's your deal you 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 work in the radio you seem uh, to know uh, no. a lot oh no 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 i just uh i you know i i have you know one of these well, uh, one of these this is kind of you know high scale you know jensen actually kind of hooks stevie up pretty well over here so but uh but no 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 i uh i gotta you know dabble a little bit in in, in the radio and uh and but, but no, I'm a, I'm a teacher actually. I don't. Yeah, the teacher. Did you did you fight the war? Uh, oh no 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 I didn't. Oh. No, I got. Uh, I actually have a uh, a uh, my my right knee is is missing the uh, the kneecap, and so they um, they they kind of just just uh, push me aside. It sounds like it would be painful. Uh, my my buddy Hugh. He he might have something for that if you know if if, if it causes you some trouble. Uh, yeah, he kind of like glances over. He's uh, oh 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 uh, no 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 no. I'm 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 good. But but uh, thank you. Yeah, sure 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 thing. It's, yeah yeah. I'm just I just, rum rum with coke is uh, it's pretty much all. I said and, you know it's, you know it doesn't it's not like it actually has has cocaine in it anyway you know but it's you know. It it's fun, you know. I'm, I'm, yeah. If you want, <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so let's. So I, while Travis is talking um, to Michael uh, and Hugh sitting there, Hugh's probably in a good mellow state right now. Um, How would we go? So, Hugh and Hugh and Travis said, you know, they were going to check back tomorrow. Um, Stevie said for Michael to come back and check tomorrow. Um, I'm going to say you guys aren't going to say, oh yeah, we'll be back tomorrow for this, and or Michael will say I'm going to come back tomorrow for that because right, you guys are regulars, so chances are you're going to be there anyways. I just didn't know if you guys wanted to discuss that separately or if it's just, you know just small talk and you'll just you know everybody will just come back tomorrow you know usual place usual time kind of thing everybody gets on knocks off work and comes in grabs a drink or anything like that um i don't think you guys would necessarily you know try to discuss that it's not like you guys are a, a team or anything so right yeah i guess the assumption would just be you know hey i will you know we'll see you guys tomorrow you know yeah. i assume michael probably leaves first because he's probably gonna go teach class tomorrow then travis and Hugh probably hang for a little bit longer until Travis can't stand it anymore. It's like, it's, it's like so completely now he's just like amped up now, like nervous energy. So like at some point, yeah. like he's like, look, man, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to bounce. I got to bounce out of here and I'm going to, and I'm going to go <laughs> and I'll, I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs> he like slaps his hand on the table and, you know, like waves to Betty and Stevie and practically runs out the door. <laughs> <laughs> and Hugh, Hugh stays out probably until everything kind of closes down because he's still working on people yeah. trying to. I was going to say that was my thought. Too. More stuff. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't, he technically doesn't even care about the election at all. He just knows that there's going to be a lot of people congregating in this bar. So he's like prime real estate to sell what he's going to sell and stuff like that. And he, uh, yeah, sells a little bit more through the night and stumbles his way home afterwards. Okay, so is there anything anybody specifically wants to do on their way home or, you know, you, you guys have left, you're going, you know, you're going home. Is there anything you guys want to do before you guys, you know, go home, go to bed, try to get some sleep, anything like that? Uh, I think Travis just probably walks around like he might walk through the park. Like he's got to burn some of this energy off now because this is not the high that he expected. <laughs> so like he, you know, like he walks 
like not around the block of like the speakeasy. Like he's walking towards home, but you know, there's like a park that's kind of like on the way, and he sort of like walks through the park. Like he's trying to get more mellow. Hmm. Okay, oh. so he'll he'll do that. Like you know, maybe up up to like an hour. Like, you know, if he's if his apartment's maybe like a 20 minute walk, maybe he spends, you know, another half hour walking around in the park. Okay. So let's do this. So Michael, obviously his mind's probably thrumming with, you know, excitement about ooh, there's the first radio broadcast. And then, you know, something mm -hmm. something weird was happening with Stevie's radio. And, you know, it gives him something to do tomorrow, right? So he's got his job, he's got work, but then he's also got something to do other than just going there just to do some drinking wow. or whatever. So yeah. he's a bit excited about that. Um, Hugh's probably just fine. So <laughs> what I was going to say is for Travis and Michael, um, let's do uh, let's do a roll on how easy you get to sleep and to see if this this thing is bothering you when you go to sleep. And I'm guessing that would just be a health roll, right? That would, that would make the most sense. Not psyche would be health. And Good. so we'll make it a challenging, you know, easy. <laughs> So it's a little bit harder because of this little extra stuff, whether Michael, his excitement about this and the little annoying thing and Travis, you know, this annoying thing on top of what he normally has to deal with and what he normally would do to mellow himself out really didn't work. So I got a two. Okay. So no and no and. Okay. And Michael. Uh, ooh, six. Okay, so the no double and... sixes. I just wasted all my. <laughs> <laughs> I need new dice. I'm gonna mute. I gotta go grab more dice. <laughs> okay, so for Michael, that would be what's that? A yes and. Uh, so the yes is yep. Yeah, you're you're able to relax and get to sleep. Um, I guess to you, you're just thinking. Unless you can think of anything, Jesse, I'm thinking maybe Michael's like, yeah, there's this annoying thing in the back of my mind. Um, but today was an exciting day and tomorrow's mm -hmm. going to be exciting, too, because I can go get more involved in checking this stuff out. You know, because it's, you know, it's like if you're a car guy and your neighbor says, I got a Lamborghini, you come check out my Lamborghini kind of thing. Right. Um, you know, so there is that there is that little bit in the back of your mind. It's still that that buzz. It's kind of annoying you. But. You can get off to sleep no problem because you're more excited about what this could mean tomorrow and mm -hmm. unless you can think of anything else you want to do for the no day. that's fine yeah okay I, so i've got something kevin for oh. the no bot okay yeah. so yeah you, you're tossing turning a bit um you're trying to settle um I, i'm assuming uh, you don't sleep very well anyways but you do yeah. things to help you sleep but yeah this is right, right. nothing's working tonight so so yeah. I, I think tonight like he has a hard time falling asleep. Like he comes home and he's still kind of amped up a little bit. Like he's more relaxed than he was like in the general sense, you know, grabs a shower, gets into bed and like fitfully falls asleep and has nightmares and just like wakes mm. up screaming, sweaty. Like he's having like trench nightmares, like that kind of stuff okay. going up over the top, people getting shot around him. Like, so he, it's it's not restful at all. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, do do we want to take a negative for that? But I'm assuming Travis. You know, there's there's probably not been too many nights where Travis has had a completely restful night's sleep. You know, so I, you know, <laughs> waking up with, you know, I guess for lack of a better word, waking up with a hangover and going to work and doing your stuff. That's not going to be anything new for him. So. It's not like you're a freshman and this is the first time you got drunk yeah, and you're going to go yeah. to class tomorrow. So let's just say, yeah, it's you're maybe you're a bit more on edge because you've got this other stuff. You know, you thought Hugh, whatever you and Hugh were going to do would be, you know, the normal stuff you do to try to relax and get yourself in a frame of mind. And that didn't work. So you're a bit more you're a bit more driven now to find out what the hell's going on because this is annoying. You know, you just wasted 10 bucks on <laughs> that first, that first <laughs> and it's really not doing it for you. So, and obviously Hugh sleeps the, the sleep of the righteous, right? Cause he's, he's all good. <laughs> no problems. His new, his new cough medicine worked really well. Yep. Maybe he has no that. burdens. So he exactly. sleeps like a baby. Exactly. You made a bit of money, tested out something new. It seemed to work for you. Travis, well, you'll follow up. Maybe there's a tweak. Maybe, it, maybe it's just Travis that, has the issue, but yeah, you're, you, you feel good. So you get a, a nice restful night's sleep. Um, does Hugh have another job? 
or is this his job? Yeah, no, this is his job. Okay, yep, so he you... he makes a living well, and he actually <clears throat> he actually um, does not have a an actual place. He just goes from friends friends house to friends house, girlfriend's house to girlfriend's house, and stays there for the night and just kind of mm. doesn't doesn't re- is not really stationary so it's really hard for him to get caught too because he's always on the move okay uh so everybody wakes up the next morning uh it's a wednesday so i'm assuming michael's working because it's uh mm-hmm. so you, no because you don't get election day off no so it wouldn't even matter on tuesday no, yeah. you're probably working on tuesday also so yeah wednesday's normal work day um for Travis, I'm assuming it's a normal day, normal work mm-hmm. day. Everybody goes to work. Um, so he works slow that day, though. Yeah, <laughs> a lot less boxes getting moved around and stuff loaded. So, yeah, uh, you know, got to make sure the the local union rep, you know, make has you covered a bit. You're going you're going on a go slow, but it's not for an industrial action. So you just tell <laughs> them, hey man, I'm I'm not feeling too good. There's no there's no political statements. I'm just not feeling too good today. Um, Okay, cool. So let's say, you know, it's getting on everybody. It's after after work finishes. And, you know, I don't know if you guys have any specific things you do after work before you head out to to Froggy's. But I'm assuming, you know, from what everybody was saying last night, Stevie wants Michael to come back. And Travis is probably even more set now after a terrible night's sleep to find out what the hell's going on. Um, so, you know, so everybody kind of filters back into into Froggy's. Uh, as you said, it's probably a normal thing you guys do anyways, but there's a bit of extra added emphasis now to, to make sure you go back. Cause there's some other stuff you guys want to be doing in there. Yeah. You know, like, like Travis makes a beeline. Like, you know, when he gets in, if he was sitting at the table, he just like stalks right over. And he's like, what the fuck was in that shit you gave me, man? It, it fucked me all up. I, I had the same thing as you did. And guess what? I slept like a baby. It's, you know, maybe it was, maybe you're just not ready for the big boy stuff. <laughs> this is fucking bullshit, man. 10 bucks. I could, didn't even sleep. Calm down. Calm down. I've got something else for you here. And <laughs> I don't just, want anything that you got, man. He, All right. Like he kind of like just pulled, like slowly pulls out a, a needle and he has, he has the usual stuff that Travis is always uh, craving or whatever, and he's like, "It's on the house if you want it, but if you don't, I'll just put it right back." And he starts to slowly put it back in his. He has a little pouch that he carries with him. He says, "You could keep it," and he pats his coat pocket. He says, "I, I brought my own tonight." Good luck with that. <laughs> just like shakes the light, you know. Angrily, sort of like pulls out the chair and lights a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> what you don't, what you don't see is that um, Hugh kind of maneuvers himself a little bit in his chair a little bit, and he pats his leg and he makes sure that his knife is in his pocket. Because <laughs> after, because Hugh doesn't like anybody telling him that his stuff isn't the right kind of stuff. So anytime anybody. He's so he's so sure of the of the things that hap- that he has that when somebody challenges that, then he's like, "Okay, we'll I'll have to keep an eye on him." Well, that makes sense, right? Because you know, it's not anything. I'm, I'm assuming so. It's not anything personal to Travis. It's just a, a part of the business, right? You know, if someone gets a a bad reaction, or I mean, it's almost like being a bartender, and you know someone gets hammered and starts, you know, mouthing off and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Well, and the fact that, you know, Travis has had this weird ear thing, you know, at the bar last night, you know, it could have been, you know, everyone keeps thinking that might have been the whiskey that he drank or whatever. Mm. You know, he's just like, he kind of thinks the same thing. It's like, well, you know, it's his problem, not mine. I didn't create it. So, but I'm also going to protect my ass because I have a business to uphold. So. (laughs) Yeah, like we're not buddies. You're like my drug dealer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, believe me. It, I'm your bu- I'm your buddy for two seconds when I'm trying to sell you something. But as soon as you leave, I'm like, whatever. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As long as you're not trying, as, as long as you're not getting into my business, then we're good. 
is Michael going to be there uh, whenever Travis comes in? I'm assuming, like you said, Hugh's, Hugh is probably already there. Is Michael going to be there? Or is Michael going to come in afterwards? Um, he'll probably come in a little bit after. Um, actually, no. He, you know what? Because he, he probably has a his his day probably ends a little earlier than Travis's. Yeah, being a teacher. So he was able to go home, get a sandwich, eat a little bit, get his tools, and then head on over. So, okay. So maybe when Travis comes in, you know, before he, he storms in and sits down at the table, yeah. with, uh, Michael's he, already fiddling with the radio. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. So Stevie and Stevie and um, in Michael are kind of up, you know, looking at the radio. Um, So the broadcast hasn't started yet. So, you know, Michael was just maybe just doing some checks and him and Stevie are, and Stevie's looking at Michael saying, I, I, I have no idea about this. You know, you were the one that kind of got it set up and running. I just know how to turn that one this way and that one that way. Um, yeah. but, you know, stop, stop, stop doing that though. It's not helping. The knob's going to fall off. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Wh whatever you say, Michael, you know, you're the one that, 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 that knows this. Uh, you haven't seen Jensen yet. He hasn't come back. And you know, narrows his eyes a bit. Um, but I mean, how are you feeling? You still, um, you still feeling a bit off from last night, or you know, am I? <laughs> yes. So yes. you still have that little bit of you know in your back. It said it, it didn't distract you from your work, right? It yeah. Is, it's it's. I was trying to think of. I was going to say it's like when you get water stuck in your ear, right? And mm. but it's not stopping you from doing anything. It's just annoying yeah, as hell. It's just annoying. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So yeah, let's maybe just say that. Yeah, it's it's there. It's not. If you focus, on, I'm assuming depending on what state Travis is in, maybe it affects him a bit more because then he focuses yeah. on it, right? But yeah, it's just it's there, and now it's like okay, it's been a almost a day of it. Um, yeah, it's not you know it's not stopping you from doing anything. It's just more annoying, and now you're you're trying to figure out what the hell's going on so yeah, yeah. It, it's still there a little bit and obviously yeah. the radio is not on right now um mm -hmm. and yeah it's still affecting you yeah so i'll say when 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 stevie actually brings it up you know michael had kind of almost gotten used to it for like the second half of the day so he actually like sticks his finger in his ear and like wiggles it a little bit and he's like i am yeah yeah it's uh it, it's it's not it's nothing okay so you guys are still fiddling um Travis, Betty comes over to you and Hugh um, gives um, – so Hugh was at Bourbon on the Rocks, right? Wasn't that what you – was your drink last night? That was my drink. Okay, so she gives you a Bourbon on the Rocks. Uh, she doesn't bring over a drink for Travis, so she kind of you know looks over and like kind of raises her eyebrows, you know, because last night was the whiskey sour, but then you switched over. And so she's kind of waiting to see what, what you want to try. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll stick with the bourbon. Yeah, hey, how you doing? Still got that that weird thing. Uh, it, it's still there. Um, and she, you know, says, you know, we got a we got a new shipment. Oh no! What did I miss? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the one above it. Sorry. <laughs> Look, when you got big giant ears like me, it makes it even worse. Um, so, so she says, "Yeah, we um, it's still there a bit, uh, and we got a new uh, a couple new bottles in this morning of the whiskey. Um, seems to be the same ones. We got a bottle of the same stuff from last night and a new bottle. Uh, and uh, so I needed something for breakfast, so I tried a little bit of each, and she kind of winks at me." Um, <laughs> But it doesn't seem to be any worse than last night, or it doesn't seem to be going away. So it's it seems to be the same as it was. How about you? Uh, I had a rough night last night. Uh, long day at work, that's for sure. Uh, if you if you if you say it's good, I'll, I'll have what you're having. <laughs> and she laughs and says, uh, I don't know if you want to have what I'm having. It's usually a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but uh, maybe I'll get you a, a bourbon on the rocks just to be on the safe side. How's that? Sure thing, darling. Yeah, but you know, she, you know, she says I don't. the 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 delivery this morning was from Stevie's usual guys. Uh, 
I did ask them kind of separately if they'd gotten any other complaints and they kind of took it a bit personally. Um, but also they can take it as personally as they want. Uh, you know, we're, there's not too many people that are going to take what they're selling. So, but they said they hadn't heard anyone else saying it, there was any issues with those batches that came in. And obviously we got that new batch from the, the other place and, and they all seem to be fine. And she, she will say, you know, I heard Mike, Michael talking to Stevie and uh, he said he still seems to have that that little thing going on too. So, you know, for the three of us, it still seems to be, you know, kind of there in the background. I uh, just don't understand it. She walks away and, you know, goes to get to get you a drink. Do you want to do another check on some of the, so some of the regulars are back in again. Do you want to do another check like you did last night to see sure. if, um, see what everybody's status is. I don't know if that's a, oh, no, that's a one. Uh, so it's going to be a seven total. Okay. So that's a yes and something positive. Um, Hmm. Okay, so you look around. Um, the place isn't full yet. Uh, you know, it's still a little bit early. Um, it is a few minutes away for the next broadcast for the the election results to keep going. So obviously Stevie and Michael are up there, and you're you know they're you know Stevie shouts that um, we're gonna, we're going to turn on turn on the the radio again for the results. Uh, unfortunately, maybe not a free round for everybody tonight. Last night was historic. Today's just a normal day. So you guys and then you just hear, oh, exactly. oh. And he goes, oh, half the on. people I, walk out. <laughs> <laughs> they were expecting free booze. And Stevie says, hey, hey, hold on. He, I gave you guys a couple free rounds last night. It all evens out. So just pretend that extra round last night was a free one for today. Uh, and, you know, obviously he's not going to worry about it too much. People can be a bit pissed at him, but they're going to come back, right? It's not like they can go. Yeah, where are you going to go? <laughs> the place down the street. So, but no, he, you know, he is a good guy. You know, he gave her, he gave everybody a couple free rounds last night. Uh, and he does take it in stride. Like, oh yeah, come on. Yeah, everybody starts sighing. Um, and when you look around, you know, the regulars that are there, you know, no one seems to be affected um, by, you know what you're expecting you know maybe people shaking their head a bit or all the all the talk is about what happened on the day um 1920 yeah so i don't think there's any steelers then so it would just be yeah so there's no nfl talk right i think the bears were around but not just baseball be baseball yeah. talk. but it's yeah, november yeah. so it's hot stove league right so maybe mm -hmm. it's talking about how the season went. Hey, what did the what did the 1920 World Series? I can look up. Well, so, so they played 164 games back then. I think they only played like 80, right? Well, yeah, it was 142 for a while. So even back then, it's probably even less. So yeah. So 1920, I think, is murder. No. So everybody's just chatting about their day at work. Um, you know, so nothing. You don't notice anything. Um, anybody talking about? what happened last night or no one else seems to be affected. I'm trying to think what would be the and for that. I got it. Okay. The, oh, she, the, she brings the, out the, the booze and the booze is really good, like better than last time. Okay. Like it wasn't made in a bathtub, even though it was. <laughs> uh, so <it's laughs> like they took the turpentine you, out. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Indians versus the Dodgers. Indians beat the Dodgers. Um, so – so that are we are we saying that doesn't tie in with that? It's just that this is a good result, right? It's just yeah, it's, it's just something yeah, yeah, yeah beneficial. Yeah. So you know maybe maybe uh, Travis is thinking, okay, this this will ease it a bit. You know this uh, this feels like a smooth a smooth batch. You know, <laughs> yeah, this is a smooth batch, and then he you know, shoots a dirty look at Hugh when Hugh's not looking because Hugh's looking to see if any of his other uh, have regulars to come in to start working. Um, so what's Hugh doing? So Michael's up looking at the thing. Betty came over to talk to Travis. More, more talk to Travis, but, you know, she's chatting a bit with you. Um, obviously, she knows you because you're always, you know, you're here pretty consistently. I'm just trying to think if there's anything that, that Hugh wants to do or talk about, you know, after he first gets there and Travis and, and Michael get there. Um. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't really have it that much of an exciting life besides um, trying to find new customers and stuff. Um, Let's say that 
You make a charm that. roll or something, right? Like maybe you're at schmoozing trying to sell product, right? Like how so, successful are you at? Yeah, so let's do that. So let's just see how how business is going. So Michael's talking to Stevie, um, Betty and Travis were chatting. So let's have you go out. Maybe, you know, he says maybe you go out to pick up the paper to bring back. Um, to read and then maybe just do a charm roll, yeah, just to see how business is going, to see what kind of frame of mind you're in. Okay. See, yeah. see, see how good you're feeling. For sure. Um, <clears throat> could I? Could I? Uh, well, I don't really have. I don't have fast talk. I have streetwise, and eh, that probably won't help in this situation. Well, it's true. Wise could, you know, you yeah. know, approach the right people, right? Like, there's probably doctors and lawyers in here just because they want booze, but then there's probably also like, I think that, I, I think it fits people, in, right? You're, you're a drug dealer. So, yeah, people, yeah. the people that aren't the rich people, the bad well, people. Well, pe people who, so people who would be interested in your wares. Yeah, exactly. I can, or, I, or can also, I can tell from a crowd. Or even from your regulars, maybe mm -hmm. now's not that, you know, they're not, this isn't the time that they would normally, or, you know, they like to get a few drinks in before they, go on to something else or yeah that guy doesn't look like he's buying top shelf anymore i don't know if there's even top shelf or bottom <laughs> shelf <laughs> that guy usually has three drinks by now he has one he's have he's had one so maybe he doesn't have the extra extra cash to to splash on you know so yeah, i would take i would take the streetwise route because then you know just understanding the vibe of everybody and you know normally if that guy has that look i know he's he's ready if that other guy doesn't then i know he's not up for anything right now okay all right that is an eight. Oh my good lord so <laughs> yes and so i would say that yeah so you got and pick the paper you know pick a couple papers up to bring in uh maybe while everybody was talking you saw the the paper boy go by and you know drop them off up front so you figure you know i'll go stretch my legs a bit grab the papers but also see how everyone else is doing what would be the and for that so you've had a good you you've you've, you've had a, a few good buys um uh maybe a bit better than normally you know it is early in the evening so maybe a bit maybe people had a few few of them had a, a rougher day on the job or maybe the, maybe it's a day for some of them so you've had a good a good buy so far I got something, if you don't mind. Yep, and the and would be. So what I instead of giving them like my best stuff, I give them something that's not as good. So I'm like, well, here, uh, I'm gonna call this candy cane is what I'm gonna call it. And what it is is it's it's a uh, um, a decent amount of uh, cocaine mixed in with some aspirin, crushed up aspirin. So like you know, I kind of give them the spiel like, oh, this is this is pr some premium stuff right here. This is. <laughs> You know, my best cocaine, the best on the market right now. Good for the nose, good for the hose kind of thing. You know, and then he uh, he sells a little bit more than he's used to, and he makes a good profit on it because he's actually, you know, not giving them as much of, as much good stuff of the good stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not the fish scale. It's the one with the, the baby powder mixed in. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and he does it in front of them to be like, oh, yeah, this is good stuff right here, you know, because he. That's one of the reasons why he he tries everything that he gives out is because then if something bad doesn't happen to him, then of course it's not going to happen to them. Kind of thing. <laughs> and it just happens to Except work because like aspirin like thins your blood so it like dilates your blood vessels or whatever so like they can absorb <laughs> quicker all of the cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> you get a quicker. So it's like it. it's like anime. It's like all of a sudden their eyes just boom. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, you know, uh, Hugh Hugh goes by. You know, he grabs the papers, he drops uh, drops one off on the table for um, Travis. And like I said, Michael is maybe going back and forth between Stevie. He's waiting for to turn the radio on. Drops a paper off at the at the top of the uh, at the bar next to Stevie. And then you know, Stevie shouts, "Okay, the broadcast is going to start in a minute. Um, let's see what they have to say tonight." So he turns it on. Um, it's kind of that same opening that they heard before and they're, you know, they're going and saying, you know, they've gotten more results in these are the updated results from the Harding Cox election. Um, and uh, it's, it, it, it's playing 
uh, Travis doesn't feel anything different, right? So the radio goes on. The radio was off before, and he had the kind of that annoying sound. Turns the radio back on. Uh, it doesn't get any worse. It doesn't go any less, um, but it's still kind of there. Hugh, no issue, not anything affecting him. And Michael, still the same. Yeah, it's you still have that in the back. You know, he said he's, it's there, but it's not really bothering him. But it's it's still that same intensity as it was before. It hasn't gone away, it hasn't gone up, um, but the radio is playing where before it wasn't. And Betty kind of looks over to, um, looks over to Travis and you know kind of points to her ear and kind of shrugs uh, after the radio gets turned on. He shrugs. Travis grabs the paper because um, I was going to say Hugh's counting his money, but yeah, you never count your money at the table. <laughs> but, nope. Hugh has a very, very smug, happy look on his face and maybe maybe orders another drink from Betty. Um, uh, Travis grabs the paper uh, and maybe Matt, uh, Matt, Michael, while Stevie's up sitting by the the radio, he's told him to stop fidgeting with it. Um, so you know, he's just standing there. So Michael maybe starts looking, you know, looking through the paper. So one of the articles that you both see on the paper is it mentions a guy named William Soboleski, uh, and he's from Snowden Township, which is you know about how many miles would that be? About ten miles outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, he there is a report of. You know, there's all kinds of stories about this historic uh, broadcast, and then of course the election results up to this point, things like that. But on there is this report from this farmer um, outside of Pittsburgh that said that um, it's a slug right underneath the stuff about the broadcast, saying, you know, he was uh, he called a reporter friend of his, uh, his and said that you know last night he felt this strange humming in his head uh, since about dinner time last night. Uh, and he doesn't know what was going on. The The article says the reporter asked him if he listened to the election results. And he said he doesn't even own a radio. So he doesn't know what this guy, what the reporter's talking about. You know, he says, well, who's winning the election? But yeah, I wasn't listening to anything last night. I was just sitting, having dinner. Uh, I don't own a radio. Uh, so I don't know what, what that, what's going on. But that sounds a bit fishy to me, you know, what the article says. But yeah, it's just some farmer guy outside of Pittsburgh saying he's got some weird humming noise in his brain and he doesn't own a radio. So he like, you know, smacks the paper and, uh, and he, you know, slides it over towards, you know, Hugh and Michael and see right here, this guy, he's, he's, he's got the same thing. It's in the paper. So, so the government's doing this is what you're saying. So like this whole like with the radio and the, the first broadcast and it was like, I don't care if that guy, if that farmer wasn't around, but the, the broadcast starts and then guess what? Everybody's got this thing. I tell you, the government is taking, they're taking over us. They're taking no, over no, minds, no, man. No, 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 no. What put it, what it, uh, what it probably was is there's a, uh, there, there was probably a solar flare and it, uh, and it created a, uh, an electrostatic, uh, feedback that uh that probably just affected you know some people with uh with uh, certain uh brainwave frequencies or you know uh you know i'm not i'm i'm no uh i'm i'm no doctor or anything i'm just you know uh it, 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 yeah yeah you use a lot of big words though you teach science or something uh, yeah, i i'm uh yeah, yeah, yes electrical engineering I think you've been. I think you've been listening to too many of those sci-fi shows on the radio. There, teach. No, <laughs> says the says the person talking about uh, 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 government mind control. Uh, that's different. Those that's real life. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I muted. Sorry. Um... So while you guys are talking, uh, Betty comes over uh, and she says to, um, you know, she says to you guys, and she looks at Michael and she looks at, uh, to Tra she already talked to Travis, so she looked at Michael uh, and says, uh, seems like this guy in the newspaper, 
Does that sound like what uh, the three of us we've been saying we've been having, right? That's like you said a weird humming noise. You said that, that's kind of kind of I think what we've got going on, right? That's that's how I feel right now. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was just telling them. I just I just seen it in a paper. It's weird, right? The guy said he didn't even have a radio. Yeah, so she looks at Michael and says. Yeah, if we turned the radio on and it seemed to be happening, but then this guy says he doesn't have a radio and it was happening, that doesn't make too much sense to me. What do you think, Michael? Uh, no, no, no. Like, uh, it's just uh, pure coincidence, probably. I don't think it would... It doesn't seem like a coincidence if it's one happens and with it and one happens without it. Uh, it seems a bit strange to me. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I, true. At that point, you do have uh, a certain certain variables that that we can now uh, account for, at least. Um, she'll pull up a table, or pull up a table. She'll pull up a chair, and um, you know, I guess maybe she would pull up next to Travis, right? Because she usually talks to Travis a bit more. Um, Maybe, Maybe she just sits down on my on my lap. Yeah, maybe not like full on my lap, but like on my leg or whatever. Maybe she's not planning on staying, unless she's staying. I don't know. That's all up to you. Well, no, yeah, we, let's do that because yeah, she sits down, chatting a bit. So uh, she looks over to the ashtray and then kind of looks to Travis and looks to the ashtray and looks back to Travis and she yeah, pulls. I mean, his cigarettes are probably on the table, so <laughs> yeah, he he pulls one up, lights it, passes it over to her. Okay, so she'll grab. So grab a cigarette, and I'm assuming you're going to light it for her because that's what, mm -hmm. you know, what a gentleman does. And what a gentleman does in a speakeasy is he lights lights the lady's cigarette. So um, she says, "I don't know what you guys are thinking, um, but Stevie seems to be Stevie seems to be a bit, a bit upset that um, that you know some of his some of his regulars have this weird thing happening to him." Uh, you know, I think we looked at some of the whiskey stuff and it seems to be all right. Uh, as I said, I tried it. It seems to be pretty good. Travis said it seemed to taste all right. Um, but Stevie's a bit concerned about these weird, this weird stuff happening. Um, you know, she looks down at the paper um, and said, I, you know, I was, I was talking to Stevie. Uh, he wants to keep, you know, he wants to keep his business going. Uh, it's not, it's not like he can uh, make any money any other way. No one's going to be coming in for uh, seltzer or anything. Uh, so he's a bit concerned. Uh, so she, you know, takes a big drag on the cigarette and says, "If you could do Stevie a favor, um, could you guys go out and talk to this guy in the newspaper, see what he has to say?" Uh, Stevie kind of wants to see, wants to break that link, see if there is a link between this radio stuff and what's going on. Uh, and unfortunately, Jensen hasn't come back in yet today. Uh, so would you guys mind maybe taking a ride out to this guy's farm and maybe asking him a couple questions? Uh, she'll take another drag and say, Stevie said you can take his car to drive out, um, you know, because I don't know how, how, prevalent having a car is you know i don't know if travis would have one um if michael would have one i don't but, think uh, michael probably makes enough money to have his own car but Hugh <laughs> probably does but i don't know if you would have a car nope nope <laughs> nothing nothing to nothing to pin him pin him if he you know does something so yeah no Okay, so so she'll stay. She'll say, you know, I was chatting with Stevie this morning before before we opened, uh, or before anybody came in, and you know, so he said if uh, you know you guys seem to to know a bit more about it than anyone else. No one else seemed to be having any issues, um, and you know, you know Stevie. Stevie knows you guys. So he said if you could do him a favor uh, and maybe go talk to this guy. To see if uh, if you can find anything out, either to uh, to say it's all a bunch of hokum, or get some evidence, or get some evidence so he can go back to uh, to Jensen when he finally shows up. You know, she throws her head up in the air, um, and you know, 
just to, to make sure we don't want to be scaring all of our regulars away from the, the place selling either bad whiskey or hurting everybody's brains with the radio. Stevie seems really attached to that radio, so I don't think we're going to get away with him not playing it all the time. So it might be worth trying to figure out what was going on with it. I don't know, baby. That's a pretty big ask. Uh, what's uh, what's in it for us? I mean, the egghead here probably want to collect some some data points. Hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I can talk to Stevie. Uh, go ahead, do we get clear that tab, huh? <laughs> Make a charm roll. <laughs> I was trying to make a charm roll. <laughs> Pair <of> twos. <laughs> nah. mm -hmm. that, Coming that down off that high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's like sweating <laughs> profusely. Uh, clear that tab. So <laughs> she'll kind of look at you and kind of arch up her eyebrow and say, uh, yeah, I don't know about clearing tabs. Um, so that was challenging. So you missed it by one. So let's say that's a no, but I got I've got a, a positive unless you can have unless you have one. Uh if we keep it on that, I would say maybe like Knox, you know, 20 bucks off the tab or something like that. I, I was thinking so she'll say, you know, you know, she raises her eyebrow a bit and says, Yeah, I don't think we'll be able to clear that tab. Um, but but you know me, I've got those quick hands. So one for you for one for me, maybe I'll be able to slip you a few more. One for use whenever I'm making some drinks. Um, so yeah, sure. So either she'll make you some heavies, or you know, she'll only bill, you know, she only put on a tab if you get like two drinks. She only charge you for one and stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to think what she would do. I guess I guess that would be for everybody, right? It's not like it's not like she can say to Hugh, um, you know, Stevie put Stevie knows what Hugh does, and he hasn't kicked him out, right? So Stevie's always or Hugh's always here. So it's not like he can do anything more for him on that front unless – but I guess the role was just kind of Travis's role. Yeah. But she'll say I'm in a good mood. So <clears throat> if you guys do this for Froggy um, – or Froggy, Jesus Christ, Stevie. If you do this for Stevie, I'll make sure you get some more um, – get some more uh, liquid rewards out of it than, um, than you normally would get whenever I'm serving you. And Stevie said he'll pay for uh, – well, of course he's going to pay for your – gas mileage or the it's his car but yeah if you guys will do this do this favor for him um i'll make sure you uh will definitely come out the ahead and the end on the old tab front uh i mean i i guess what do you what do you what are you guys thinking you got anything going on here I don't know. It seems like uh, this is going to be taking a piece out of my business. You know, uh, what's that guy's name again? The, the guy, who, uh, or the other guy? The guy that we're going to go see. Uh, William Sobieski. Uh, Sobieski. Yeah, William Sobieski. Okay. Um, what did, What did you say about him? Sorry. I'm thinking about too many things right now. Well, he was just saying that he he called a reporter friend of his because um, he was you know about the he read the the oh that's the far we're gonna go see the farmer farmer yeah the farmer okay I thought yeah. we were talking about the guy that is missing or whatever that oh no the guy that gave him the radio is Jensen he hasn't shown okay. up yet but yeah okay yeah. gotcha yeah yeah Stevie's keeping an eye out for him but yeah this is just something because the guy in the paper said he doesn't have a radio. He wasn't listening to anything, and he's got that same kind of weird thing going on. Um, gotcha. So she'll she'll look over to to Hugh and say, uh, "I'm not saying you have to go tonight. Um, obviously, you don't want to be driving around at night, and this is the the time when you get to your most business." So, um, Stevie said, "You guys can go ahead and take the car tomorrow morning. He's not going to be needing it, and it's not like you the place is open early anyway." So. Hugh, unless you've got some other action going on, there's nothing really going on here at that time. Uh, Hugh kind of like um, uh, squints his eyes at her and he says, well, Stevie's always been good good with me, so I suppose I can do this one thing for him, I guess. I was going to say, we could, have, we could have Betty make a charm roll. Yeah. Uh, 
Here, let me do that. Uh, okay. So, a waitress in a speakeasy. I'm trying to think. Her charm level is going to be pretty high, right? I would assume. I imagine it's going to be at least a three, right? Yeah, right. That's what I was thinking was a three. Tight so, dress. Yeah. You know, there's a flapper dresses were pretty short, right? Like I'm, I'm, you know, she's all done up. And I'm assuming the first line of defense, if you know someone is trying to rat rat Stevie out or rat you guys out, the first line of defense is going to be the woman batting eyelashes at him. You know, if he's a copper coming in. So yeah, it's, mm. yeah, three. Let's do three. The charm she probably has some kind of skill too, right? I'd give her at least a plus one and something. Okay, so we'll say six. Um, or no, we won't say a six. It is a five plus one, and we'll say the it was three. And we'll say the DL was three because I think that's what I had John roll on. Um, so she'll look over to Hugh and say, um, "So that's a yes." And so for her, yeah, yeah. So how would we play that? It's something positive for her. We go do it. <laughs> well, no, no, I guess that's the yes, right? I mean, that's yeah, the that's yes, the, yeah. And I, I, I was thinking of an uh, the and would be a positive for Hugh, but if she's rolling it, it's not really a positive for you. Yeah. Um, but well, let's do this because she's building relationships, right? So she'll say, uh, okay, so you, you guys will do it, but then she'll say, um, uh, I, I really appreciate this, guys, uh, and I'll make sure I keep my uh, keep my eyes out for anything um going on here and she'll look to Hugh and say you know I do I do have some friends who were some waitresses at some other uh establishments maybe that you don't know about uh maybe I can put you in contact with them uh to see what's going on over there and kind of winks at him yeah and I'll even kind of add on that like I he he likes to pick the people that he's interested in stuff like that and he doesn't it's not that she's not attractive. He's just not. He's just not interested mm. in her or whatever. But like he appreciates what she does. So let's just. I I would say that like when she gets him stuff there, like he tips more than usual, just because he trusts her more than he trusts a lot of people. Okay. So that sounds good. Okay, so she'll go over and um, you know, she'll she'll talk to. Well, first, she'll get a round of drinks for everybody. So she she brings back a round of drinks and, you know, kind of says, let you already keep in my end of the bargain and kind of sashays away. Uh, and then, you know, you see her go talk to um, go talk to Stevie and he kind of looks over and he shakes his head and kind of mouths thank you to you guys and, you know, kind of waves. Uh, so, you know, she said you guys can go tomorrow morning. You don't have to go tonight. Uh, you know, it's getting a bit later. Uh, he's turned the broadcast on. Uh, election results are coming through. No other effects for you guys. No effect for you. Everyone else seems to be all right. Uh, nothing going on. Um, so when when Betty came back, you know, she'll say, uh, "Before you guys go out tonight, uh, I can either give you one of you guys the keys tonight, or you know, you can just maybe swing by tomorrow to grab the keys for the car." You said a Model T. I said a nineteen twenty Nash. So. It can be either. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So, okay. So it's a Nash. You've got a 1920 Nash. Um, so she says, you know, you can swing by tomorrow and pick up the keys. Uh, and, you know, if you guys are going to be staying a bit later tonight, I'll make sure I, uh, I keep the rounds coming. And, you know, she'll walk back over to Stevie. That sounds good. I At some point, uh, Travis wanders away and takes a couple of drops from his uh, bottle of morphine. So if you want to make a check on that or. Yeah, let's do that because it's normally what you do, but you're also a bit more on edge and you've got this stupid damn thing in your head. So, you know, you're. Yeah, let's yeah, let's do a roll. Why not? Uh, it's going to be a four total. OK, so that would be a yes. And what's a plus one? I forget what that was. We did three. Uh plus one would be oh you nailed it so yeah so you took it you're feeling good um maybe the 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 effects are what you expected of it um and maybe even it's had a bit of an effect that that annoying thing in the back of your head's kind of 
not you're not noticing it as much. Maybe that's because you know it's whatever you did last night with Hugh didn't seem to work too well. But yeah, you know, yeah. just going back to the old tried and true, that seems to be that seems to be doing all right for you right yep. now. So it hits him the way he expects. He just sort of mellows. His eyes are a little glassy. You know, sit at the table. You know, make small talk and go. Uh, yeah. So what? Uh, what do you what, what do you think about this guy? You, you know, you think there's there's something going on there? Like what? Uh, I don't I don't know what uh, he expects that we're gonna. You know, we're gonna find out, right? Like I mean, the guy's just a farmer. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. I, I, I honestly don't think that we're gonna find much when we head up there. It's, yeah, you know, but it, it, it's, it's Stevie. So you know, he's, he's, he's done us a lot of good. So, so I figure we can do him some good. Yeah, a couple, a couple of minutes for a couple of minutes of our time for a couple of drinks. Yeah, that, that's not a bad deal. So he like kind of absolutely sort of touches his nose and then he points at you and he's like, see. That's why I like you. Oh, I thought you were doing that because it that was feeling good. You were touching your nose. Not, <laughs> not the, no, he's just kind of like at like you know his elbows on the table, and he's just kind of like you know tapping and then kind of like pointing his hands, like exaggerated pointing. <laughs> like all like everything from before has been forgotten. Like it wasn't it wasn't even that he was really mad at Hugh per se, right? Like. Yeah, it's one of those things where you're mad at yourself, but you need to kind of lash out. So, yeah. like, I was the my he was the closest guy to him. So, yeah. Is he, Hugh your hookup for the morphine? Also, he is. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, no. So the so there is no morphine. It's or or yeah, it's all, it's morphine. It's morphine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No heroin. <laughs> Kurt keeps saying heroin. Now I'm all confused. I, I said it once. I said it <laughs> once. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My brain is shot. No, so yeah, he's he's my hookup. Like that's how we know each other. You know, it's like Pineapple Express, although we don't have like well, I guess we are gonna have grand adventures. So maybe it is like Pineapple Express. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so unless there's anything more you guys want to chat about, um I guess we didn't ask Michael. Oh Michael did say he's he's up for going. He doesn't expect anything major to come out of it, but yeah. you guys are all good to go. So does... I bet. I bet the. I bet the guy has like, like a like a son or a daughter that uh, that secretly has a little makeshift ham radio in the in the farm in the farmhouse that they've been playing with, where they're stringing some wires, right? Like all the new electricity <laughs> right. is coming in. Yeah. So like, <laughs> so do, so Michael hasn't made that many rolls, but we'll save that a bit. Does does he want to make another roll to see how big? Because What's going to happen now is, you know, you guys are just, it's a normal night. The thing's playing. Travis is in a better state of mind, right? He's not, he, he's mellowed out a bit. The, the the thing's still there, but it's not bothering them. Obviously, mm -hmm. Hugh's not affected, so Hugh's just doing his normal stuff. Michael says, you know, it's still there, but it's not paying in any mind. And, you know, now he's at a place, it, it, you know, this still, still is part of history, this, you know, this cool thing, listening to radio. And now he has someone else to talk to. Um, you know, find out some more information about this radio thing. So I was assuming the rest of this night was just, you know, some normal being in the bar kind of stuff. You know, mm -hmm. Betty comes over, talks to you guys, to Travis. Hugh, do you want to make a roll to see how business is tonight? Just to, just to throw in another another roll to have it. Sure, I like I like rolling. Okay, so a charm of the streetways. Uh, that's a five. So that would be uh, yes and something positive. So I would say, yeah, business is good again tonight. Um, and maybe, unless you had an A and Kurt, I was going to say maybe everyone else seems to like Grandpa's cough medicine. It seems to be a big hit, even though nice. Travis doesn't seem to be too happy <laughs> yeah. with it. Yeah, no, that's seems... a good that's a good and because you know he he he's always positive about his stuff, but you know the let's just say the the thing that happened with Travis didn't really shake him, but it's also kind of like, it's kind of nagging him in the back of his mind. He's like, this, this shit is good. I know what it is. You know, I just have to find the right person. It's, you know, it's, a couple... good to see, yeah, it's good to see a drug dealer with standards. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, even as low as they may be, I still got them. So, 
Nice. At some point, you just like look over and give Travis like the fucking hard squint, like, "Mm, mm." (laughs) yeah. I'm assuming Travis isn't going to want to try again tonight because he's already got a, he's already in a good mood as it is. So he doesn't want to harsh that buzz by trying that again. Not that, not to say that he won't try it again. I'm sure you always come back around, right? You're going to try that again. (laughs) not Not tonight. You're feeling good. He's, he's in a good spot. Okay. So, yeah, the rest of the night is just, you know, the normal stuff like we said last night. Uh, Michael is – hmm, how are we going to do this? Let's say tomorrow is an inset day. I don't know if they would call them an inset day at school, right? But um, uh, just from my past experience going to school in Pittsburgh, in November they usually had a couple of days of school that were teacher days, but that ended up being like the first day of hunting season. So school is off. So let's just no, say for some reason school's off tomorrow. So you can go in the morning, you know, with everyone else. Um, so you don't necessarily have to go the same time you did before because, you know, you have school, but I'm mm-hmm. assuming everyone else is maybe Michael, unless you have something, maybe you're hanging up, listening to the radio, talking with Stevie a bit more since you don't have to rush home because, you know, this is, you know, this is a, a broadcast, so you're a bit more mm-hmm. intrigued now. Oh, you know, yeah. You're just sitting listening. Then, you know, Travis is just sitting there mellowed out. Yeah, you know, Maybe he's not rushing to get home tonight because uh, he's feeling a bit better. And then Hugh's just working in the room doing business. So nothing else specifically happens for the rest of the night unless there's anything you guys want to want to have happen or, or do. Yeah. Michael's good uh, just kind of hanging out sipping his rum and coke and uh and kind of fiddling with the wires yeah i i think while you're at the table he would just make small talk and bullshit you know yeah. when betty came by and flirt you know maybe even like more exaggeratedly since he's like in a pretty good spot you know like maybe more than than what would be like our normal playful playful mm-hmm. banter and she's probably a bit flirty back to you a bit more also. I mean, because you said she she knows you guys. You guys are always, or you two specifically, you know, you're always chatting and stuff and flirting. But, you know, you seem to be in a good mood. She's happy because you guys said you would do this favor for Stevie because maybe Stevie's been driving her nuts all morning and all afternoon about, about this. So she's in a better mood now because, you know, you guys are helping him out a bit. So, yeah, she's been a bit more flirty too. Um, so in general, she's being a bit more flirty with everybody, but to you, it's more flirty than usual. You know, she's maybe a little bit more because, you know, you guys are doing her a favor and she's, you know, she's making sure that two for one, it's not an official two for one or a happy hour, but she's making sure, you know, you guys are, you guys are being taken care of. If you give me one minute, I'm going to go grab a drink real quick and go take a comfort break. Give me two minutes. So yeah, tonight, everybody's just, you know, chatting bar stuff and then next morning everybody will show back up and um go head out to uh talk to this guy you saw in the paper but i'll be right back okay do you have anything that you want to do jesse no no i'm pretty good okay i feel like we when kurt did the thing and he's like hey i'm a criminal with drug Tolerance. I'm like, fuck, well, I guess you're my dealer then. <laughs> so, like, there's a natural thing there, and then it feels yep. like kind of shoehorning your character in. Like, it seems to be working, right? Yeah. Like, it's not. Yeah, like... it's fine. Okay. Just trying to make sure that my ears don't sweat off. <laughs> How the hell did I ever wear these things for so long? I was going to say, those lights look like they're trying to burn your ears off. Right? They're that's massive. Probably the... Yeah, and that's probably the only reason why you're sweating so much is because of the lighting yeah. in those things. No, I mean they're not. It's not hot. It's just, it's really well padded. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love I love earphones like that, but I haven't I haven't worn those in years. Yeah. These are the usually- same ones I've had since we started the podcast. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice. The microphone doesn't work anymore, but <laughs> that's awesome. I don't think I've had a, a pair of headphones that have lasted very long. No. My what you know when I was doing more with the MP3 player, I never had a set of headphones last for more than a year. Yeah. Really? I guess maybe because you're, you know, continually rolling them up and unrolling them, whatever, like sticking them in a bag or 
Mm, yeah, talking or something. Yeah, mine are always breaking. I forgot. All right, I actually went, I'm going to take a small quick break since he's a dude. I'll be right back. All right. Oh. Hell yeah. <clears throat> are they finally charged enough? <laughs> no, I forgot that I have two of them. Oh, it's well. a left and a right, and I've been using the left, and I forgot that. Oh, yeah, I can also use the right one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is it me, or does this one feel off a little bit? What do you mean? I don't know. It just doesn't seem like a normal dicking around style of game for whatever reason. Is it me? It might be me. Yeah. I don't know. Feels good so far. Okay. It feels it it feels Cthulhu-ish. Like there's <laughs> kind of it it there's kind of just like that little like slow ramp. Mm. So. And I think you mentioned that for the last one, and I guess that's the mindset I have to get to change. Right? It's the investigation slow build kind of thing it's it's not pulpy where stuff's jumping out at you all the time yeah so, yeah, I, yeah. so I did make a couple changes to this to change that a bit and mm -hmm. I was telling John before that might be good because you know we could do this in two I think the thing I added to it, it would be a good break point and then we could follow up so you, you know you're doing all the investigation yeah. and stuff and then okay do we I don't know if, do we want to do so so you know what's coming so uh it's 8 30 figure we maybe have another half hour so do we want to get out there and have a conversation or start a conversation like i don't know how quickly things are going to ramp like i don't know how far you want to no if, if the if the the timing for kind of what everybody expects you know kurt getting up that should be fine it's not like we have to compress anything or stretch okay. it out it, it'll yeah, fit yeah. In. It'll, yeah it'll fit in Okay. Well, and that's what I was figuring is that with the time we're at right now, um, you know, like like uh, Jesse said, it does it, it does kind of ramp up a bit. But I wanted to get some of that stuff in there, and I guess it is a bit more Cthulhu-y than than that. But you know, like the investigation, all that kind of stuff. But no, yeah, if we say in the next half hour, so that'd be definitely good. I mean, Kurt's old, so he's going to be ready to go soon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't stay up until I'm not a vampire like you guys. But we've had this discussion before. Is Kurt the oldest, though? I thought we said no. No, no I think it's you me. are, Kevin. Yeah. No, oh, no. Me. Really? Me. Wow, you are really old. I'm Holy 49. Smoke. Yeah. I'm, I'm, Todd's oh the only God. one that plays that's older than me. Wow. <laughs> at least there's one of them. You're only a, yeah, you're only a few years away from your AARP card. Look at that. Yeah. Jeez. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> at least I'll get a discount on movies, though. <laughs> when, I, when I go to get my Denny's in the morning, I get my senior 10%. Nice. <laughs> Moons over Miami, here you come. <laughs> okay. So, so the night passes with nothing going on. So uh, Hugh's happy because Hugh's had a good night. Uh, he's gotten some good reviews. He made some good business. Uh, Travis is happy because uh, he's not on as on edge as he was the night before. Uh, he's feeling pretty good. So uh, unless there's anything specific that Travis has through the night, he gets a good night's sleep. As good a night of sleep as he can normally get, right? Well, no, I was going to say, so like, I, I don't know that it's interesting to roll that. Um, but should we roll it? You know, would that be like a psyche check to see – like how restful sleep is like, I'm not trying to hamstring the character, but no, I would say so for you and Michael, it might be worth doing that, <clears throat> you know, cause you know, so this is, you know, this would be the, the second day of this kind of weird thing in the back of your head. Right. So yeah. uh, Michael, Michael said, told Stevie he's yeah. Oh, it's just there, but you know, it is having effect. So mm -hmm. yeah, let's, let's make a roll. Uh, Hugh's fine. Hugh's like good. Yeah, he's he's good to go. He's had a good night. I got a four. Okay. 
Five and six. Okay, so four would be nailed it precisely. So you. Oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's it's sleeping, right? It's not really hard to sleep, but it's a bit harder for you. Um, and oh, you know, isn't 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 nailing the DC though, and no butt. No, but he, he was got plus one. It was, the DC was three. Oh, so it was, that's it was, okay. It was challenging. Um, if I said difficult, sorry. No, it was challenging. Sorry. All right. Um, yeah, I did say not I'm difficult. Just try, I'm I just mean. trying to screw John over. That's <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> uh, so for then, Michael, it would be yes and something positive. So, yeah, he gets a good night's sleep. Um, and unless you can think of a positive thing, maybe it, it, it it's even a better night's sleep because, hey, a, you're – don't have school tomorrow and b you know you're digging more into this this weird thing going on with uh maybe the radio whatever the broadcast so you know it is kind of exciting you're kind of you're getting geeked up for that so mm -hmm. he's All like right. he's like a little kid when he, they don't have school tomorrow he's like yes i can do whatever i want <laughs> <laughs> not even a snow day you don't have to try to look out the window it's just and warm. and the uh the what was it? what's it called the uh the oh what is the the wagon thing from music man from what dang it there's a whole song about it music man uh, john it's called the musical have you ever seen have you ever heard of it i, no, I don't no. i don't I'll watch say, musicals I'll say, i've I'll never say seen Sears, it Sears delivers my new spanner wrench <laughs> or it doesn't like was, it's nice outside right like we get to make the the drive maybe not with the top down because it's pittsburgh in november but november yeah. but there's no snow right like there's no it's pittsburgh in the 1920 uh, in 1920 so it's probably <coughs> Shit all in the sky, too, right? right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Businessmen used to change their shirt twice a day, kind of thing, but it is a nice day because you're also going out of the city. So you're going South Park is not near where all of, and it is actually called South Park. It's not, there is a place called South Park. Um, you know, it's not where all the mills are at. And so it's, it's nice, clear sky when you're going out. Yeah, so let's say that. So, you know, you got, unless there's anything specifically you guys want to talk to, Betty and Stevie about, you know, maybe you guys show up, uh, check out the car, get the keys. Who's going to drive? Who has drive skill? Who has operate heavy machinery? Nobody. So, like, I mean, if, if you, like, modern day, right? Like, if you were like, hey, I'm going to send an email, you wouldn't roll for it because everybody knows how to use a computer. But if you wanted to, like, hack the system, yeah, then you have to make a roll. So, right? So, assuming that no one chases us, and we'd have to make any maneuvers. Like I think anybody could drive. Yeah. Would, would yeah, and I mean, cars have, cars have been around for like almost twenty years at yeah. this point. I guess we we have maybe driven at some point in time. Plus, would Travis have any experience from the war? And so I'm trying to think what. Uh, that's nah, he's probably an infantryman, right? I mean, that was mo they brought tanks in like later. Yeah, and, and yeah. planes a little bit. I mean, but driving like a. Driving like a like a Jimmy or something like that. I mean, he might have some experience at the dock, maybe moving stuff around. They, I don't, they don't have forklifts then, do they? <laughs> That's what, now I'm assuming it's all. But I, yeah, I'm not going to make you guys roll for driving because I'm assuming at least you've driven something, right? Because it is kind of a novelty, even if you don't own one. I'm sure right. you knew someone who had a car or whatever. And also, right, you're not going, you're not whipping down the interstate at 70 miles an hour. You're, it is, you know, you're sure. topping out at about 30, right? Exactly. I mean, <laughs> Hugh takes the subway because there's always potential for new customers. So he's never driven Smart. in his life. Taking all the trolley cars. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. So oh, let's see. Let's see who's driving. Just so I, I was going to say, one two is Travis. Three four was Michael, and five six was Hugh. And I rolled a one, so Travis is driving. Okay, so I guess when they get there, you know, um, he's like, "All right, well, so, uh, so, so, what do you think we're gonna find out then? Like, what do you you have any? Uh, what do you want us to ask around?" Uh, so it's gonna be Betty talking to you, right? Um, so she's just gonna say. Um, 
I don't know. Stevie just seems to be a bit bothered by, you know, us being affected by this. And then this guy being affected by this, but then us having a radio and him saying he doesn't. So he just wants to try to, if it comes down to, I think if it comes down to brass tacks and it's either get rid of the radio or get rid of our whiskey supplier, he just wants to be able to make that decision. And, you know, she kind of looks at Michael and goes, he really does like that radio, but I think, you know, business comes before uh, novelty. So I think Stevie's just trying to, trying to see, you know, which way he's got to make a decision on. So, uh, you know, if, if you can just find out a bit, bit of information from this guy, um, that will help Stevie make the decision. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to, you know, cut off his foot and it find out it's the, you know, his hand that's causing the problem. So, you know, if it's the radio, then we'll go find Jensen and chuck that radio back and get him the pays tab or, you know, we'll get rid of those guys that are bringing down the, whoever bringing the, in that, that, that batch of whiskey and we'll have to find another supplier. All right. Fair enough. Um, he, uh, he looks over to the car and says, uh, I guess I'll drive. And she kind of tosses you the keys, the old movie, movie montage where she chucks you the keys and you grab them and mm. everybody gets into the car. It looks like it's a fairly biggish car, so it's not yeah. too bad. So nice space and room. I don't know who's riding shotgun though. I'll leave that up to Michael and Hugh. I don't know. I'll uh, Michael will see where Hugh wants to sit. Where Hugh would Hugh always sits in the back. He never wants. That's to what be I figured. Front. You don't yeah. want people behind you, right? Yeah, you want to have your back against the wall. Exactly. So. <laughs> Okay, so it's about a 30-minute drive. Um, so, yeah, as we said, you're not really whipping whipping through whipping through the interstate or anything. Um, it's a 30-minute drive. It's, uh, you know, about – said about, so what would that be? Did we say 30 miles an hour top? So maybe – let's say it's five miles outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, 30, yeah. yeah. So it's, it could yeah, be it's 30. more – yeah, it's a 30 minute drive. But it's it takes 30 minutes to get there. Um, okay. yeah. It used to take me like 15 minutes, but yeah, so we'll double that saying it takes 30 minutes to get there. Um and it you, you know, you're you're going out from the city. Uh it's a little bit more rural. Um houses are a bit more spaced out. Um and you're actually getting into, you know, kind of more farmland kind of thing and you're just pulling up to um because at the time, right? So this guy's in the newspaper, so they put his address in the newspaper, right? At the time, sure. it was like, you know, you're not getting doxxed or anything. So yeah. this, this yeah. guy lives here. Um, so you go out and, uh, you know, it's just a, a little farmhouse out in Snowden Township, which is in South Park. Uh, and like I said, the guy's name was William Soboleski. Uh, so you kind of pull in to the front and gravel, pull up to the little white clapboard house. You know, a, little, a, a few small fields around him. It looks like it's mostly, um, you know, not subsistence. So, but he's growing stuff for himself, right? It's not like he's got like big, huge fields out. You know, he just has some like garden, garden plots around. Uh, and when you pull in, so uh, I guess go up and. Well, before know. we get to the door. Yeah. He's like, uh, uh, who? Teach, maybe you should talk to this guy. You 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 got away with the kids, right? So maybe uh, maybe maybe you could uh, you, maybe you could talk us through this, huh? I, I yeah 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 I mean I can uh I can I can talk to the guy and and, and figure it out. It, it should it should be easy. Okay yeah I mean because I don't I mean I move freight all day I don't you know I talk to you guys. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, no problem. Okay, so Michael's going to be the face, then he's going to go up and, well, I'm assuming you guys are all going to go up, but Michael's going to be the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The okay. He'll be the one to knock on the door and be in front. Okay. <laughs> Michael has a one in charm. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a plus this. one in persuade, though, so we'll see. Let's see, there see you go. Yeah. 
Okay, so I guess you guys are walking up to the front door. Is Michael's going to knock on the front door? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Michael knocks on the door. Uh, older guy, let's say probably mid to late 60s. I was going to say an old guy in his like 70s or 80s, but yeah, I don't think. <laughs> chance of, we'll say especially a, yeah. especially a farmer <laughs> uh, in his late 60s, mid to late 60s, comes to the comes to opens the door and says, uh, "Yeah, can I help you?" Uh, um, um, yeah, yes. Uh, sorry. Um, uh, we were here. We read your story in in the newspaper and uh, and just had some some questions. Oh, that about the about that noise thing, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said it was a, it was, it was a hum, uh, almost, almost kind of like, kind, uh, uh, kind of like a, uh, you know, when you get something uh, stuck in your ear, or, or if, uh, or if, you know, you, you, you accidentally touch uh, a, a live, uh, a live wire. So he kind of looks at Michael and says, "Just." You picked this up just from reading the paper, and you wanted to come talk to me about it, or is uh, uh, and uh, no, 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 we um we we know some uh, some people who have been uh, having kind of the the same uh, same reaction. And he was, you know, he started to close the door a bit, but then he opened, you know, he kind of creeps it back out a bit and steps out. So, so you you know some people, or you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, uh, uh, yeah, yes, yes. Yes, uh, um, on both both accounts. And so he kind of looks. He looks back around and looks at Hugh and Travis. Those two guys have it, or just but, someone uh, else? Uh, no, uh, no, um, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, right. yes, don't, no, yes, no, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's in the, the buzz. It's a buzz. Yeah, weird, a weird sound, humming, like right. In the back of your head, right, and it won't go away. No matter yeah, what you do. You you didn't did you did you ever fight in a war? I mean, not not in the last one. You look a, no offense. You look a little old for that. So if he's in his sixties in nineteen twenty, that would be nineteen fifty five. Yeah, he still um, he would have been in his fifties still. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was, like, it was the like, Spanish American War or whatever. Like, yeah, that's what yeah, I was yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. No, actually, yeah, he probably would have been in like his twenties at that point. So I was going to say, yeah. So he said, yeah, a yeah. little too young for the Civil War, a little too old for the Great War. Um, mm -hmm. But I was down in. Uh, he wasn't on the main, right? Because the main got sank, got sunk. But yeah, the I was in the Spanish American War. Um, but yeah, I don't think. From what I've read about the Great War, I don't think any of that. We didn't have to deal with any of that kind of stuff. It was more uh, cavalry charges and stuff like that. So, yeah, but yeah, it can't be that. I never had this. I never had this before. You know, even at, even in the war, you know, firing guns. I never, I never had this kind of thing. It's just this right, right in the back, right in my ear, right in the back of my head. It's and it, it's been since the other night, and it hasn't gone away. Uh, no matter what I do, it, it won't go away. And then. He reaches into his overalls and pulls out this, you know, little tin um, flask and takes a sip of the flask. No matter what I do, it doesn't go away. And he puts it back <laughs> into his, puts it back into the pocket in the front of his uh, overalls. But I wasn't doing anything I, different at that time. I was just, was just out, was out working. Fertilizing, I, mean, I guess because nothing's grown. It's November. Without fertilizing my, you know, these little plots uh, before winter really sets in, uh, went in and sat down for some supper, and it was just all of a sudden I was sitting there eating, and all of a sudden just this weird, this weird, this weird feeling, this weird thing in my head, just all of a sudden. Uh, you 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 don't happen to have any um, any any uh, electronics or any. Uh, uh maybe a uh a bigger car or tractor or um like a, a radio or of of some sort no uh don't have that big of a field it's just all you know stuff i grow for myself uh 
don't have anything mechanical like that. Uh, don't have a radio. The only, the only reason I heard about this radio thing was uh, that my neighbor next door, uh, he came over that night after, after it started, and he was telling me about it. Um, yeah, so I don't have a radio. He's got a radio. He's not even Did really a... He's not even really uh, a farmer, though. No. Uh, uh, where, where, uh, where, where does he live exactly? Uh, he's the guy that lives next door. His old man gave him a bunch of money. Uh, he said he has a radio. Um, uh, said he moved out here uh, to go dig in the dirt and pretend he's a farmer. Uh, he's not really a farmer, but yeah, he's the one that came over and told me about this radio thing. Um, don't yeah so. That, that's why I called my friend who was that reporter because I had this weird thing. And then, you know, that, that, that pompous guy over there was telling me about radio, but yeah, I'd, nothing. Yeah. I don't have any of that. He may have one. He said he does, but yeah, I wasn't listening to anything. And he pu pulls out the flask again, and takes another drink. Yeah. And he kind of, he, at that point, Michael kind of shoots Travis and Hugh, a, like a knowing look of like, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, where where where'd that guy come from? Is he he's not uh he's not from around here, is he? No, he's a fancy pants guy from the city. Um I guess his his dad has a bunch of money. Uh he said he moved out here, uh get away from the city. He was wasn't doing his health any good. He's he's a young guy. I don't he talking about how his, his health's bad, but yeah, so he, he lives over there and yeah, he, he was mentioning something about that election stuff on that broadcast. That radio thing. Uh, 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 do you uh, do do you know uh, do you know his name? Uh, Nigel. His name's Nigel. Nigel McGahey. Nigel McGahey. Does that name does that name sound familiar at all? Uh, hmm. Nigel McGahey doesn't. Um, let's do. What kind of role can we do? Would that be brains? Just like a, yeah. So yeah, let's, I mean, let's do a, everybody can make a brains roll, like a trivia kind of thing. Yeah, really, no, you see it on the paper. Yeah. yeah, that's a five, a four, six. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Uh, so the four is that would be yes, but something negative. Hmm. What can we do? So, you, so that would be Travis rolled the four, right? Yes. Uh, Travis, Travis has heard that that last name, McGahey. Maybe not Nigel McGahey, but he's heard McGahey. Um, let's say that Nigel's heard that, or Nigel, um, Travis has heard that name, but whenever he's heard that name, you know, it's, people grumbling about it. So down on the docks, maybe all the workmen uh, talking about it. Uh, he doesn't get anything. He doesn't any, know anything really too much about it, but something about rich guy, uh, not giving back that kind of thing. So you have heard the name, but you don't have, you know, it's not really, you're not very clear, but it's just kind of rumors and stuff you hear from all the guys down on the docks. on the. On the so maybe he just blurts that out then. He was like, yeah, I, I hear, uh, I don't know about that guy, but I, that name, his dad must be a cheap son of a bitch. And then, yeah, so Soboleski kind of looks at you and, you know, nods his head and goes, that wouldn't surprise me uh, for that, you know, puffed up guy next door. That would make sense to me. So what would be a five? Uh, five is exceeds by one but nailed it. Okay, so yeah, so Michael has heard the name before, uh, McGahee, um, and he's just seen it in the paper, uh, kind of like in the business section, you know, investor guy. Um, and I guess specifically for Michael, you know, that name McGahee kind of is around whether it was the um, the broadcast itself, you, you've heard that name, and it's usually someone quoted um, speaking for the company, talking about the broadcast and what it can offer and things like that. 
So the last name, McGahee, not Nigel McGahee, but you do recognize that McGahee name. And Q got a six, so that would be uh, yes and. So Hugh has heard the name before, uh, and he's actually heard a different name, though. The name is Forrest McGahee, uh, and that is uh, something he's read about in an investor in the company that was behind, you know, setting up the the stuff for the broadcast. So whether that was the actual radio station itself or, you know, some investors behind it. <clears throat> um, the name is Forrest McGay. He, he's been in the press about building up to the broadcast, talking about it. And I guess, you know, from Hugh's assumption, it would be this Nigel guy. From what Sobolewski's saying, obviously this Nigel guy is this Forrest McGay's son. Um, so he would be like, hmm, McGahee, Forrest McGahee. I think he's the one that's, I think he's the, the dad, the money behind, he's the dad of Nigel. He's the money behind the radio station. I wonder if the radio station's doing all this weird stuff to everybody. Maybe he's controlled by the government, huh? Yeah, might be, might be. See, see, everyone hey. calling me crazy until it actually until it until it adds up, maybe maybe it could be uh, that you know something something of this uh, scale has has never actually been done before. So so maybe it's just uh, uh, maybe just the the strength of the signal that's uh, that's kind of uh, you know messing with some people's some people's uh, brain waves. Sure sure sure, it's all just an accent. We'll be able to clear it up. Uh, so, <clears throat> so Bolesky will kind of look around and say, I don't know how much other information I got for you guys. Uh, I told that reporter pretty much all I know. I was eating dinner. All of a sudden, all this weird feeling in my head. Then my snooty neighbor came over and started talking about some kind of broadcast. And, and that's kind of what it is. And that's things still going on. Uh, you guys don't know a way to get rid of this, do you? And he takes another slug of his, uh, of his flask. Uh, no, I just, I just a couple of days now, you know, like sticks his fingers or wiggles it around. I, I, I thought it was uh, from all the, all the artillery in the war, but maybe not. I mean, you, you didn't serve. I, I, I don't know what's going on. Kind of like tries to uh, like what, pop, like yeah. pop his ear, you know, like opens his mouth or pop his ear. What, uh, what, 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 uh, what, what time did you have, uh, dinner that this, that this kind of started? Let's say the broadcast started at seven o'clock. Uh, hmm. so Sobolewski says, um, yeah, I got done working. Uh, obviously the sun goes down a bit earlier now. So I was doing a bit of work. Went in, was relaxing for a bit, fell asleep on the chair. Uh, I think by the time I started eating, it was probably, you know, uh, you know, quarter to seven, ten to seven when I started eating. I mm. uh, was getting ready to finish up, uh, finish my drink and go put stuff in the sink. And, um, you know, just all stud when it happened just when I was sitting there, right when I was getting in and, and turn. And uh, and and uh, Nigel came by after, after that you said. Yeah, he came by to brag, saying it's this big history thing, and you know he was listening to it, and you know I can't listen to it because I don't have a radio, and he was talking about, you know, his old man and you know this radio thing. It was yeah, it was after this all started, all this weird thing. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank. Thank you. Uh, so while you're talking to him, Travis is just sort of like looking around to see. Is there all the five on awareness just to kind of get a, like a lay of the land? You know, there are high tension wires being put in or like, you know, uh, you know, phone poles or, like you know, anything that maybe would make a buzz or a hum. You know, does anything seem weird? You know, like he's always kind of 
in that space. So when you look around, you know, you see kind of where this Bill's, Will, William Sobolewski's plot is. And then there's that other farmhouse, which you're assuming is where McGahey lives. Uh, you know, it's a couple minute walk away, but you can see it. Um, there are kind of some lines strung up, but um, they're not like super close to the property. I'm trying to think how this would work in time, right? Because um, everything would be above above ground, yeah, ground, ground, right? Yeah. yeah. So there are, you know, there are obviously because if McGay he has a radio, there's obviously some electrification out here. Yeah. But it's not like it's it's not running over the house. It's not, you know, there's not like a he's not like on a, a main street, so it's not like poles going down the street. Um, but there is, there are some around, but they are set back a bit. Um, but then would those be underground? Let's just say, yeah, the main, the main lines of them, the poles are further out, not close to the house, but yeah, there probably is something that comes up and you have like the big, those big black things that stick out of the side of the house where everything's hooked in, but you don't hear anything, right? There's no buzz. You don't hear anything. There's not that, like when you're standing under a power line, that's unshielded. Like you don't yeah, hear yeah. any of that, okay. any of that kind of thing. Okay. And everything looks normal. You know, it looks like November yeah. fields for however much you would actually know what that means. Like everything looks like it was tilled over. There might be like stacked hay, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. He's so he, you know, he said he was out fertilizing the fields, you know, putting them in because it's uh, a fat, you know, it's fallow now. But yeah, everything's all dug up. Everything's been all weeded and everything. Everything looks in order. And he said this isn't his. Like it's not like a production farm; it's just his stuff that he yeah, uses. Yeah, family farm. Survive. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, everything looks everything looks normal and good. Okay. So he just you know pulls that cigarette, lights it, takes a deep drag, you know, kind of like looks around and says, "I don't know." Uh, he didn't ask us to talk to this uh, McGahey guy, but I mean, if we're here, you guys wanna you guys wanna go over and see. I mean, you, Hugh, if you think that uh, his dad's the uh, one behind the broadcast, then maybe we could uh, maybe we could find something out. It makes sense. I'm kind of it's weird. I don't really care about this stuff you normally, but I'm kind of intrigued. I mean, it's just weird, right? I mean, yeah. Well, again, it this stuff happens, and then all of a sudden, everybody's you know, a, lots of people have this. I mean, I mean, I, I, it can't be a coincidence. Did you talk to any of your other neighbors? Anybody else have any kind of weird uh, thing? What about the guy with the paper? Did he say anything? Uh, no, so don't have that many neighbors out here. Just that guy next door. Uh, the guy from the newspaper, uh, I just called him because he's a friend of the family. And I just thought it was kind of strange after, you know, McGay, he came over and talked to me. Uh, he didn't tell me he heard anything else about it, um, but I just wanted to give him, you know, maybe if I could put something, maybe I should have mentioned McGahey's name in that article, uh, maybe just to put the boot in for him because he's he's unbearable to deal with, you know, snobby guy living next door. Um, but no, the reporter said he hadn't heard anything, um, but this was, you know, I called him, how would he call him? Yeah. So he has a phone. So when when Michael asked him before, he has a phone. That's about it, right? Or it's the main phone. Um, mm. Yeah. So I called him that night. Um, and he didn't say anything. He was just interested in, uh, you know, to something to tie in to put under that article about the this big broadcast that everybody, this big radio thing that everybody is talking about. Um, but yeah, nothing. He didn't say anything back to me. He just wanted a bit of information, uh, and it was just me more venting about my annoying neighbor. So it was me me doing a lot of talking. Not him doing a lot of talking. Well, maybe it's a good thing you didn't use his name. If he was, if he's a pain now, it would be even worse if you put his name in the paper. <laughs> well, exactly. But yeah, I think uh, he he might have turned it the other way. I think he he's the type of person who expects his name to be in the paper. Uh, so maybe maybe me not doing it maybe it was a a better dig at him than if I did put his name in the paper. Hmm. He seems like one of those kind of guys. He just nods approvingly. He's a dock worker. He gets it. <laughs> <laughs> we set the set the house on fire when we leave. <laughs> nah. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so I did say it's a couple minute walk to McGahee's. Let's say it's a couple minute drive. So it is a bit. It's probably like a half a mile, right? Like at yeah, least you can see it. Yeah, you can see it, but it's not like right next door. So you know, it is a drive over. So country um, neighbor. Yeah, ex exactly right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, so Bolesky will you know say is uh, anything else you need from me, guys, or uh, if you want to go talk to that uh, that blowhard. Yeah, he's over there. It's not like he's got much else to do. Um, so he should be home right now. It's still early. It's not like he has a it's not like he has to go to work or anything. No, I thank you. Thank you for uh for, for talking with us. Uh yeah, it's it's weird. We we appreciate it for sure. <laughs> we didn't know if you were gonna answer the door. Bunch of bunch of strange guys pull up to your house. Uh it's not like I have too many other people to talk to, so it's nice to talk to someone. And then, yeah, you know, do me a favor: if you do find out what's going on with this ringing thing, you can get rid of it. Make sure you let me know. Uh, I don't think uh, I don't think my home remedies have been working very well. That's still sticking around. I know how you feel. All right. So, are you guys walking back to? He's you know he's going to turn around. He's an old farmer guy, right? So he's done talking to you guys. And he kind of turns around and just goes back in and shuts the door. Stand there with his hands in his bib overalls for a minute. Bits of big jaw, you know, tobacco <laughs> juice. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the discussions you had with him. So I guess it's now up to the three of you to decide what you want to do next. So I guess as we walk to the car, so, yeah, so uh, I guess we drive over there then. Oops. Yeah, why not? Let's yeah. let's see what's up with that little peckerhead. Yeah, yeah, I'm in, I'm interested to see uh, what uh, what technology he has that, that that he's using for this. Do you think he could be doing something down there at the farm? Maybe that's why he's all we had here. If he's not a, like a real farmer, right? I, I I don't know. I didn't I hmm, hmm. I didn't I didn't thought about that. I just uh assumed that he was maybe using some uh improper shielding or uh or something. So would would that affect us all the way back over at the Froggies though? If he was if uh, no 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 said? but no but I uh I'm assuming uh, uh potentially it could have been a similar issue with Jensen's perhaps uh Perhaps some of the uh, some of the the casing for the the radio was uh, improperly installed or, or not up to uh, specifications. Hmm. Well, it's new it could, it, 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 Yeah, it, it could be why uh, why the the unit that Jensen uh, was able to give Stevie was uh, was marked defective, and he was able to 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 get it out. Oh, you think he put one over on uh, on Stevie? Oh, oh, ab absolutely, yes, yes, I do. Uh, I don't know if that's going to go too good for him if he shows up again at the at the bar. I mean, uh, he's a uh, nice guy and all, but I think Stevie might have his legs broken. No, no, no. I well, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put Jensen in in that position. I, I wouldn't. I, I, I mean, that's you're, you're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna tell him, are you? Are I mean, I don't know nothing about any radios. I mean, if if you think that maybe it's it's broken, then I mean, we should probably tell him, right? I mean, he wants us to figure something out. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. true. Well, uh, we'll uh, we'll, de we'll deal with that when it comes. Yeah, it's not my legs. All right. So is is you. On board with going over and talking to this guy too? Is he? Oh yeah, yeah. No, nope, he's interested. He's he's on board now. He's trying to figure out what the hell's going on here. Okay, so everybody hops in the Nash, and Travis drives there. Like I said, it's a couple minute drive over to the other farmhouse. It's almost the same kind of setup as Sobolewski. Uh, you know, there's like little garden plots around. Uh, the house looks like it's had a, a newer, fresh coating of paint on it, kind of stuff. But it just looks like a, looks like a farmhouse set out with a, 
<clears throat> a little thing um and you know you drive up it's the same kind of setup you know just grab up to the up to the front of the house and you know, travis was looking around so it doesn't look like there's any anything different with the way of you know the power lines or anything they're still kind of set far back you know it's kind of running off the same that Sobolewski's was um you know back further away from the house but you know there is the hookup up on the side of the house um, but yeah other than that they kind of look the same except this one looks like it's a you know been a bit spruced up compared to the other one who wants to talk to this guy <laughs> i think T I, I, think, I think teach has got a a a nicer face than both of us i think he'd probably teach should still be the one that's doing the talking I, I i i suppose i suppose i could plus you'll have tech you can talk about tech yeah 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 we'll do that so i'll, I'll just lean on the co like he's on the fender of the car like leaning on the car smoking a cigarette Um, he will, he will walk with Michael to just kind of be his backup just in case something, just in case this rich prick ends up, you know, doing something or saying something stupid. Okay. So the, the two of you are going to go up to the front door then, and then Travis is going to hang back. Okay. Uh, go ahead and... Give a knock on the door. Uh, <laughs> uh, no sound, nobody answering. Um, knock, you know, so um, Michael knocks again. Obviously, no answer. Uh, there's kind of like a door. It's like in the middle of the house, and then there's like kind of two windows on the sides. Uh, you know, it's late morning, uh, so there's like no lights on or anything. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, no one's coming to answer the door. Are there uh, curtains or uh, or what? What would they be called? What the hell could they called? Like the things. Like the shears on the inside. Mm -hmm. Blinds, uh, shutters curtains? shutters shutters that's why yeah they're like are there like curtains or shutters or anything on the windows just some some curtains and drapes but they're like kind of pulled back right so they're not blocking oh yeah the window yeah they're so yeah you, you know, they, it's not like blocking anything yeah so i'll uh i'll kind of uh michael will walk around a little bit and see if he can look in through the window and okay. kind of announcing himself too being like uh uh mr mr mcgahee you look in uh don't really see anything uh it's just it's let's say it's like a a one room kind of thing you know there's there's a kitchen in the back and you know a couch and whatever uh a desk uh you don't really see anything in there uh you don't hear any answer back how about travis well how about everybody everybody give me what did we say <laughs> Not, oh, I was gonna say awareness. What did we say? That's tied to for is that brains? I think it's uh, brains or psyche. I have it for psyche because it's just sort of a <clears throat> okay thing for him. Yep, yeah, go ahead and do that, everybody. Six five four. So I got an eight. Ooh, six. Four. Okay, so oh, where's that difficulty level? Oh, I just so everybody eight, six, and a four. Is that what we said? Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, I can't believe I can't find it now. Give me one second. Uh, so let's start with the four. Uh, e, that was Hugh rolled a four, mm -hmm. right? So Hugh hears kind of like a, a low whistling sound. Um, 
and you know he's kind of looking around so you yeah so you you exceeded by one so you nailed it precisely so you just hear like this this like whistling sound it's a, a bit low um it doesn't sound like people whistling but it's kind of like a whistling sound that was gonna be my question yeah <clears throat> so he was like guys do you hear that now i hear now i hear some shit. do you hear that whistling it's like a low whistle it's like a it's but it's not like real people whistling it's like something else yeah no for sure that's different than than than, than what i was hearing from before mm. okay what, what do you guys hear does it almost does it sound kind of like um uh like a like a low tea kettle sound or so we'll go with michael next you got six right michael okay yeah, so that's that's uh, yes, and something positive because you did more than one. Um, you hear the whistling sound, and it doesn't sound like it's. Um, it doesn't sound like yeah. It doesn't sound like a tea kettle. Um, it mm. sounds almost like like the wind blowing through something and then being obstructed. Well, I guess that's what mm. whistling is, right? Because you purse your lips or whatever. But you know, it's almost like it's. It's very low, but it's almost like wind blowing through something, and that something mm -hmm. like that is causing the, um, causing the, um, you know, that 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 friction or the reaction is what's causing causing the sound. So, what would be the positive for that? Um, yes, and he can track down where the sound is coming from. Yeah. So yeah. So you can you can hear. So Hugh just kind of hears a whistling sound. So it sounds you know you're in kind of an open area. So you think it's just, you know, a whistling sound coming from somewhere. Michael can hear it and he kind of knows that it's coming from the house. Um, you know, not necessarily where it's coming from the house, but it's coming from the direction, like the house out. It's not behind you. You know, you're staring at the house and it sounds like it's coming in front of, in front of you. It's coming from inside the house is what yeah, you're It's saying. coming from the direction <laughs> of the house. It's coming from inside the house. Hmm. I knew it. Hmm. And then for Travis, which is uh, yes and something positive, you know, you can hear it. Um, to you, it's it's over and above, you know, the other, the annoying sound you've been having recently. That's kind of internal that you're hearing that. But this is kind of external that's coming out and you can hear it. And, um, you know, you're back at the car, you know, you have your cigarette, you know, you immediately look towards the house. And let's say on the top of the house, maybe there's like an extra floor and there's like kind of a window up there. Um, let's say, you you know, you can you can hear that it, it it sounds like it's coming up from above and coming down. So it's not coming up from the door or anything. You know, it's coming up from the top. Um, I'm trying to think what the positive with that would be. I find 10 bucks on the ground. <laughs> 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 like it just like sort of tumbles across and hits my foot. I bend down and pick it up and then I point with my hand with this, you know, with the cigarette up towards the the upper floor and I'm like, you know, I think it's coming from up here. It's it sounds like it's in that spot. I would and it uh it actually it would make sense to have uh the radio uh higher up for uh for better uh clear for for better uh signal connection. So But why is it whistling though? It's inside the, there's no wind in the I, house. I, 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 I think the uh, the sound might be coming from perhaps a uh, uh, a a hum of the of the static from the radio. Um. But also, it, no. Go ahead. Let's say maybe you're right. Maybe it, it, it doesn't have the shielding or whatever you were saying. Yeah. 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 Exactly. See. Yeah. I'm you, gonna. See. Oh, can I say something before yeah, you do that? Good. Absolutely. Uh, I want to. I just want to try the doorknob really quick, just to see if it opens. Okay. While you do that, uh, so John, what were you going to say? I think I said what I was going to say. Okay. So I want you to remember this for the next the next one. So you're going to have a plus one. John is because so that'll be the the something positive, and while. Hugh is shaking the doorknob and turning it, you know, so Michael's standing on the port or up, up near the door. Um, 
Travis is back near the car with the cigarette staring up at this window. Uh, Hugh comes up and starts turning the door. As soon as you turn the doorknob and push in, there's a big gust of wind that uh, blows out from the house. So Hugh and Michael kind of get thrown back, not like completely tossed back. Mm -hmm. but you're blown back from the door. Let's let's do if you can see. So what would be to help them keep their balance? Would that be grace, be uh, grace roll? Might or grace? Grace. Well, maybe yeah, might, so yeah, if you want to. Either one. So yeah, go ahead and do that to see if you stay on your feet or if you hit the ground. Not that, not that you're, like I said, you're not getting tossed or anything super far back, but you're going to oh. get blown down. Six and double fives. Six. Okay, so the both of you both of you get blown back and you're still on your feet, but you're kind of, you know, wobbling a bit backwards. So that would be, so you nailed it exactly because it was a difficulty mm -hmm. five. Um, so there's no yes, there's no and or but on that. So you just get blown back. You're like maybe blown back 10 feet back away from the door, um, but you do get grab your balance, maybe your arms up in front of your head. John, you look up and see the window blow out and all the glass go flying. Oh, and, I didn't make a roll. I, should I have made a roll? Uh, you're further back. Yeah, go ahead and make a roll, but it'd be a different DL because you're further back. Uh, so I'm going to make a grace roll. Uh, high is a five. Okay, so then you nailed it exactly because then that was difficulty four. So he, you kind of. So when the when the window blows out, he dies for cover, right? Like this is not the first time something <laughs> has exploded in my direction. So he's on the other side of the car, like just dives on the ground and you know fucking rolls up behind and he's like what the fuck was that okay so then you dive out hit the ground uh the window blows out and out of the window hold on give me one second where is my stream yard out of the window you you hear this whistling so the whistling gets louder there's still like kind of gusts of wind going on and what you see is this coming out of the window. Screen share, uh, window, Chrome tab. Come on. Oh, I think it is that one. You see, let me know if you can see it. Oh, hold on. Head to the stream. <laughs> the fuck? What the fuck is that? <laughs> you see that floating out of the window. Looks like an alien head, like a xenomorph on top of a fish on top of a nut, or a xenomorph on top of an octopus on top of a fish. <laughs> All right, now hold on. This is a psyche check, a hundred percent. Before we get the fuck out of here. Ah, uh, no, I've seen this before. <laughs> yeah. After after a bad batch, you've uh, had a bad yeah. Day to do that. Yeah, so wh while you guys are making the psyche roll, so obviously th there's wind blowing out from this thing's weird mouth, and then that's where the whistling's coming from. And you uh. push back by the wind. Well, I'm not going to make it, I don't think. <laughs> four. I got a four as well. I got a five. Okay, on the psyche roll that we have, John, for the Corthulu. Yeah, there's says, a... <clears throat> Yeah, Good. it says four for seeing some kind of weird uh extra weird thingy um, so this might be a little bit more than just like seeing a deep one or a goal like this okay. is this seems like a whole other level because those are like kind of band. humanoidy shape kind of. <laughs> yeah okay well let's take that up then um let me see i mean it's your call as the gm no, 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 look at the picture I, I feel like that's probably a, a higher role okay that sounds good to me yeah, I know if I saw that thing, I would shit my pants and then probably right. die. So, okay, so let's say okay, John rolled a four. Oh, uh, don't base it on our rolls. You you no, pick no, 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 no. Yeah. no, I'm no, I'm going through. So Travis rolled a four. Michael, what did Michael get? Four. Ah, uh, four. Okay, and what did you get? Five. Okay, so it's on a scale of one to ten, right? So I would uh, say yeah, I mean, I guess it could three. technically be higher, but. Well, no, I was just, I want to make sure I wasn't confusing that with the, the shock table kind of thing. Because um, I was just scrolling through real quick. So yeah, let's yeah, say yeah. That, So that's a six then. We'll say six. Okay. And then four on this for the the 
the psyche roll, miss more than one, miss by more than one, no, and the GM rolls on the shock table, and you get one psyche, minus one psyche. So, so we actually change that, right, Jesse? What are we doing? So we just take a trauma. Yeah. So now it's yeah. So now you roll on the shock table and gain a trauma. Okay, that's fine. And then what? It, sorry, Hugh. What did you say you got again? You a got five. Six. Oh, you got a five. Mm -hmm. So you missed it by one. Um, so we doing for that? No. But uh, roll on the shock table, right? For both of them. Yeah, there's there's no extra. Okay, gotcha. No. So for miss by more than one or miss by one, it's roll on the shock table. Yep. So you okay. roll for all three of us. Okay, so I'm the one rolling for all three of you. Yeah, I mean it's sort of a narrative thing. Anybody like we could technically technically yeah. roll, but like to sort of reinforce the loss of control of the character, we make it a GM roll. Okay. So for Travis. Travis goes diving out of the way onto the other side of the car, um, pops his head up and screams, you know, what the fuck is that thing? And he is on a five, so that's paralysis frozen in place. So he's back behind the car with his head popped up, staring at the thing. And when he screams, yeah. he kind of freezes and stares at it. Jaw right. open, just eyes <laughs> big as saucer plates. <laughs> and you see, like I said, this wind is still coming out and you hear that whistling sound. Um, and then next is Michael, and that is uh, six. So Michael's a bit closer than Travis was. Um, that makes sense. And he starts screaming in fear or aggression. Definitely fear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then next to next to Michael is Hugh, where they got blown back, but they're still on their feet. And he is, he is three. So he's rock solid and holding it together. So <laughs> Travis is stuck behind the there car with his head popped up, frozen. <laughs> Michael's screaming. And Hugh is holding it together. Yeah. Hugh, Hugh pulls out his knife, pulls out his knife as he's yeah. like going back. He kind of like steadies himself kind of with his arms back. But then he pulls out his knife out of his, uh, out of his uh, ankle, like, whatever uh attachment and then he's just like what the fuck is this thing what the fuck <laughs> well he's holding it together but he's also still like yeah fucking exactly. what the fuck yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you might okay. say he's unsettled <laughs> oh, there you go so nice. separately i wanted to try to cut after this but I don't know how much longer that's going to go. So if we want to do the, this thing bashes out of the house and sees you and cut it there, I'm quite happy with that because I want to do the combat, but I want to do it right as we discussed before. So I that might go a bit longer. Yeah, yeah. I think with like rule stuff that might. Exactly. Might and I want to make sure bit. we did it because we had that discussion separately. I want to make sure yeah. we do it and get it framed right and then walk through because you know it's something we discussed i feel bad sorry that we couldn't get to the after that that's what i was trying to get to tonight but yeah no, that's yeah. good i was having a bit more fun so yeah the, the last thing you see is travis behind the car screaming what the fuck frozen michael is screaming i'm sure f-bombs like <laughs> no nah, I, I imagine him almost like like uh like hey hey from moana when he first realizes he's in the middle of the ocean he's just like <laughs> <laughs> and Hughes calls calls a cucumber, but he's still screaming. But he's uh, yeah. he's pulled out his his jabby thing and he's staring at it. Nice. We'll leave it there. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, we'll we'll, we'll do a. Po I guess we're gonna not post show because we're gonna leave it in. I guess as far as like discussion stuff. But I'm gonna thank everybody for checking it out. We have coffee for sale. Uh, the legendary brew. You can hit tinyurl.com forward slash legendary brew or check out the link in the show notes. Uh, our Patreon is up. Um, so if you want to throw a couple of bucks at us that way, that's cool. If not, we mostly podcast for spite anyway, so it's, it's probably fine. Um, ratings and reviews on iTunes help out a ton, just uh, bumps everything up in the algorithms. Should also go and check out and rate Monster Hunt and the MFG cast as well. Two awesome other podcasts that I also happen to be on. That's not why they're great. They're great because 
of the, the, the groups and the people who put all this stuff together. Uh, so we appreciate you checking that stuff out as well. Uh, do you guys have anything before we sort of dissect what happened? Nope. Nope. Cool. Thanks, everybody. We're going to break down the episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so for you, Kevin, now having run like a second Corthulhu game, um, did your approach change any? Did your um, tweaks to the, the adventure change very much? having had a core Thule game under your belt or did you approach it like it's just a regular game? I think, <clears throat> I think what we said before about core Thulu is it's, it's a bit more fun than just playing a COC game because as we said before, I failed the role. Okay. Well, you don't know what that thing is or you didn't find that book or whatever the yes. And no, but no. And you know, that, that makes it narratively, it, it makes everything go a bit, you know, you don't have to worry about missing stuff that, that you wanted to do. I think right. the problem I ran into now is trying to, um, you know, I wanted to, to do a couple of those, those um, the more discussion things getting up to this point. Um, but as we said, it's that mind frame of, you know, the, the Call of Cthulhu is that slow build, that slow burn to the thing. I didn't want to have it where, you know, we spent five hours playing and reading stuff and talking to people. And then all of a sudden at the end, this big weird thing comes out at you. You know, yeah, I, wanted yeah, to, yeah. I wanted to break it up a bit. Um, you know, so this is a good break point where we left it because this isn't, and I'm not spoiling anything. This isn't, you know, after this, this isn't the end. There's there's stuff to do after, which is, you know, which I wanted to kind of do. So that was a change I made after we did the last one was, you know, throwing some cthulhu things in there instead of just at the end. You know, as we said, it's not like a pulp thing where there's stuff jumping out at you all the time. And I think that's my problem that I have to work on more is putting some more of that in there. Um, because if it wasn't for, you know, this thing coming out or, you know, it, it, the one we did a long time ago, you know, you know, Shub Niggurath shows up, stuff like that at the very end. You know, mm -hmm. on that one, we did a thing where the little rat creature came out with the human face on it. So just putting more mythosy things in there up to a point. And I think that's what I have to work on a bit more without giving away the game. Right. It's yeah. You yeah. You can't walk down the street and see the Cthulhu down the street all the time. You have to right, try to work right, in right. other things. So, but no, I think I'm quite happy other than the fact that, like I said, it still feels like it's a slow burn. Hopefully that's all right with you guys. Cause it still has that yeah. Cthulhu feel of that, you know, building up to something. Yep. For sure. But I think, I think, I think the, um, you know, the, using core i think it's really great for this stuff as we said before it gives you a lot more options it gives a lot more you know if you want to do some more improv improv stuff you know you're not railroading it hopefully you're not railroading it because in D D or any other thing is oh i succeeded or i failed but you can succeed and something bad happened or you can fail and something right. good happened so i think that makes it a lot more fun doing it that way and it opens up some other things to do right now, so what would have happened in the, you know, with the first psyche roll, had everybody passed then? How do you, like, from mechanically from, like, a scenario perspective, critiquing yeah. the scenario, yeah. then how do you then drive plot to be like, oh, shit, well, they all passed. So, hmm. It was going to be that Betty still had it, right? So she was going to be the one. So that was one of the things I wrote. Well, fuck, if everybody's sure. health's good and they all pass it, then there's has to be that in there. So it was either, it was going to be Betty or Betty and Stevie, but I think Betty would be the one because then we could have Stevie fidgeting around with it and saying, I don't know mm -hmm. what you guys are talking about. So it was, she was going to be the one that says I, this weird thing's going on. And then after that, then you would read the papers or, you know, hear that stuff about other, happening to other people. And the fact that this is kind of your local and it worked out good that Travis kind of had that relationship with her and then sure, Travis sure. and Hugh had the relationship. So it was going to be, well, someone else that was going to have, yeah. If yeah, everyone passes, then you're like, oh, okay. So that's what I wanted to do. And that's the, some of the things I put in there is if everyone passes, then she would have been a bit more vociferous and boisterous. Maybe she wouldn't have been holding it together as much in, in the, in there. If it did happen to her, if you guys all passed and she didn't, maybe it was affecting her a lot more. She acted out a lot more. And then sure. that would have affected you guys because it's like, oh, here's this person who's kind of a friend of ours and she's kind of losing it kind of thing. And that 
you know, would drive it forward. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I was, just, I was jotting notes down as we were playing. <laughs> and I think the good mm. thing is that, that Hugh and Travis kind of have that relationship. And then Michael has that, that the, the, the knowledge or the interest in that. So I guess if all else fails, then it, hopefully we could have had Michael drive them saying, this is something new. I'm interested in this. This isn't right. We've got to go do something, you know, because he had that experience. You guys, you, you guys aren't all just farmers, you know, you know, there yeah, was yeah, that, yeah. that bit. So, you know, hopefully that would have been, if there was not resistance, but if it didn't, if the roles didn't come out that way or the, the, the narrative didn't go the way people were playing it, then maybe guide Michael more into, you know, pushing you guys along with Betty to, to focus on it. Yeah. And my other uh, note that I made was that maybe um, Stevie should ask for the favor. Okay. Right. I guess depending on the scenario, right? Like the three of us all had it. So we sort of, you know, yeah. shared that, that thing in common. But if, if she, you know, had gone to him like, Hey, you know, uh, you know, other PC has the same thing. Then, then maybe he would, you know, cause it's his car, it's his place. Yes. It's now ostensibly his radio that like, you know, that she would have that much say in things that are happening to be like, Hey, yeah. you know, Betty told me you, you know, you guys had the same thing. Yeah. I, I don't want to drive anybody out of the bar. Like this is, yeah. You know, it's already shaky business. If the cops find out or whatever, like, Hey, maybe you go suss this out for me. So that was a big hole when I was reading through it. It was all this happened. And then you guys go talk to this other guy and you guys yeah. brought up the good point of like, what are we going to go talk to this fucking guy for? Yeah. So that, that yeah. was kind of on the fly where I'm like, when I was looking at it today, I'm like, okay, well, how do I get them from there to there? And then yeah. that's what I thought. I said, okay, we'll either have Stevie or Betty kind of talk to him about it. And then when you guys went, well, how are we going to get this guy there? And I'm like, I'm glad I thought about it before. Cause that was a big hole in there is <laughs> to force you guys to do it. But since you had been chatting with Betty, you know, she'd be coming over to you separately and talking to you. I said, well, let's do it that way. Cause Betty can talk to Travis and they're both affected by it. But yeah, either way, I, you know, you could put that in saying have Stevie do it or have Betty do it depending on how the narrative goes. Maybe yeah. it's just Stevie saying, look, if you assholes go do this for me, you know, I'll give you some extra, you know, like you said, I'll cut your tab or, you know, something like that. So. Yeah, I, th I think that would. I mean, because like we're gonna obviously we're gonna follow a plot because that's like no, we don't want to agree anyway. to sit down and play the game so we know like when says hey, can you go check this out? But, like that's what we're supposed to. We're gonna, no, we're not gonna do that. Go get me another beer. Yeah. Fuck, what do I don't work for you? You know, yeah. like. But I but, think but yeah, like narratively, you wanted to kind of yeah, and you bring that up doing a charm roll, saying, well, well, you know, what are you, you going to do for me? I think that that was good. And even if Stevie was the one that was doing it, I'm sure he would have had to make a role or you guys would have to make a role. Well, what's it in it for me? Or, hey, I can give you this. But even if we come to loggerheads on that, you know, that's my, you know, that's the person running the job and your job saying, OK, well. To throw some cash at you or yeah, look, yeah, yeah, go do it or I'll call the freaking cops on you, that kind of thing. You know, there's <laughs> other ways that could have popped into our head. There's always something there, but it's nice to write something in saying maybe even, hey, here's are some options to get the team out to go do that is, you know, bribe them, threaten them, you know, sweet talk them, that kind of thing, maybe putting that in there. Because then when I was looking at that today, that's what I said. I'm like, well, there's no connect to get them to do that. So that's when I real, real quickly wrote down some of those to, you know, have them chat to you about it. And, and I wonder if that should be an opposed role as opposed to either Stevie or Betty making the, you know, making a charm role mm -hmm. that, that, it's an opposed charm, right? Like, well, hey, maybe you could fucking cut my tab. And then Stevie rolls through the like, I don't know about that, you know. And then we let the dice decide, right? Because yeah. depending on who succeeds and at what level. Well, I guess you, you can also leave that up to, you know, as we always said, some people like to roll more, some people like to not roll more. Sure. We've been in games where we never roll or we're always rolling. So maybe leave it up to us saying, okay, well, if do an opposed roll, if you get higher, you get more off your tab. If he gets higher, then it's like, I'll give you an extra drink. Just go do the stupid thing for me. You know, I let you yeah. hang out here. I let you hang out in my bar and, you know, sell drugs to everybody. And you know, <laughs> you, you're playing with my radio. That's, you know, my new pride and joy, that kind of thing. And you're getting handsy with my waitress Just shut up and go do it. You know, that kind of thing. So you can do it. But a post roll would sound good because then narratively you can play off of that depending which way it goes. Yeah. And, and if you're going to, you know, if you're going to publish this as a call of Cthulhu scenario, right? Like some of this critique maybe isn't, isn't as valid. Well, you know, no, cause it we're is thinking about it in a core. 
exactly exactly way yeah yeah and but then and that's what we said it, it's not it's not hard to con convert stuff to core right because then it's yeah, all okay, yeah. well, if you make this role that role that role you know it's you know all the stuff all the core stats and any other syst any other system not just cthulhu i mean the ones here match those pretty perfectly and it gives you more room to wiggle to be a bit more experimenting or coming up with stuff on the fly instead of it being crunchy where it's all rote where it's i do this then this then this then this so i mean that is the fun thing about core it is it is that flexible that you can you know you can go outside what you would normally do if you think about when you're rolling kind of thing so and the and the you know we know the core part works um i'm i don't know so i kind of so it it's in layout like first draft of layout is done um so like I I don't think we're gonna make any like really hardcore changes at this point. Like it, it's been copy edited. It's it's all ready to go. Um, I wonder with so like f having a bad reaction with you know granddad's cough medicine, you know creating nightmares. You know there's trauma symptoms that will you know you nightmares is one of those things as opposed to you know the character didn't sleep well or had nightmares or you know, maybe generally has nightmares, but like not in a way that's mechanically like trauma. You but can just like do a of like, because like, yeah. you know, my grandfather was in World War II and would wake up screaming, mm -hmm. you know, I'm gonna fucking kill you and blah, 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 whatever. Like, just because it was shell shocked. Like nobody gave a shit. Like those guys didn't get any help at all, really. Yeah. Um, so, so there is that aspect of, if you're going to play a character that maybe incorporates some of that, you know, how to separate the, the role play of like, Oh, this is, I, this is an interesting concept that I want to play, but it doesn't have any of these mechanical, you know, these mechanical things. It's like, you know, given him, you know, just unsettled, like as a permanent trait, maybe it would have been a better life shaper choice. To, to maybe separate. I don't know. I, that, that's that's a me thing, I guess, just trying to figure out whether See, I, those but, systems make sense. Yeah, but I think you have that list in there of things that are, you know, affecting um, when you do that. I guess because the nightmare, yeah, the nightmares is in there, right? That's in the, it's in the thing. Right, um, so I guess the, the difference being mechanically, if we take this out, is that like role playing wise, yes, he may have nightmares. Like Nash has nightmares in the Day Trippers game. It doesn't have any mechanical benefits as a role playing choice, or whatever. But mechanically, when you hit nightmares, then it then it becomes not necessarily a life shaper, but it, it does inform then who the character is, and the GM can impose penalties. Yeah. Right, so like you you asked early, like, well, does this mean? Does it mean something? Yeah, and, and maybe it should, or maybe it shouldn't. Right, like I guess it's it's a, a table there, feel, a player feel, and but there was a thought in my mind when we were talking about that is that depending on how how many days you had that, maybe then it would be a minus one to health or what. So yeah. I I was thinking about that. I didn't say that to you guys, but I'm like, okay, well if if Travis has a second real bad night of sleep, then it is going to affect him. So in the, that did play into it that it's not just a narrative thing. It is like a mechanical thing where there will be you know, health or grace. Well, I didn't get a good night's sleep, so I'm not moving around as well or I'm feeling yeah. shitty. So I did think of that, but you did have that second good night's sleep. So then I said, okay, well, they, they bounce out. And it's not like your character isn't used to having shitty nights of sleep, right? If, yeah. Maybe, yeah if it was, sure. maybe if it was Michael that was having that reaction, maybe it would have been different because he's not used to – waking up feeling like, you know, feeling like ass all the time. You know, Travis yeah. probably gets through life feeling that way anyway. So, well, Hence a lot more feeling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. right. That's, exactly. So usually takes it at night before going to bed because, you know, it stays off the nightmares. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and, and there is text in there. There's box text in there to, to discuss that specifically insofar as that there's no mechanical penalties for trauma. Yeah. That it's you know it's it, it should inform the role playing right and yeah. and again if people choose to not use that yeah. part of the system for whatever reason and it doesn't yeah. matter what that reason is yeah. then you can you can just toss that out and not use it 
if everybody's comfortable with it and everybody uses it. And, you know, if early the next part of the day, Travis would have needed to make, you know, uh, a brains check or some sort of, you know, concentration focus based thing. Maybe there is a negative in that, you know, yeah, exactly. you wake up unsettled, you wake up disheveled and, and not having slept. It's like, Hey, I need you to, I don't know, go work the crane. Well, maybe he shouldn't be on the crane or, or whatever, you know, whatever it would be, you know, figure out the Sudoku puzzle, like go oh, fail that, you know, um, but the way I read it also was it's in the roles, right? So yeah. they're in the roles. So I'm going to use them for it, whether it was just narrative or if it was mechanical, you know, yeah. it's there. And it, like you said, it's up to how it's going, how everyone else is playing it and how the person running it. But yeah, to me, it's like, okay, what's, well, it's an option in there. You can do it or not. You can do it either way. Um, mm -hmm. But it's not that prescribed of, do this, you roll that, this is what happens kind of thing. Because sometimes people like that very proscriptive. Some people don't. They don't like the, yeah. you know, being told what they like to do a bit more narrative. And I think it, all of us, you know, all the games we play, they swing back and forth even in games, whether or from <laughs> session to session kind of thing, which to me is great, right? We're not playing Traveler where you may die trying to create a character and it's, you know, that rigid. You know, yeah, we can yeah, work yeah. on it a bit. So, and, and to me, that's that that's the thing I like about you know we can make it crunchy if we want to or not, and everybody just goes with the flow. How everybody's feeling? Maybe it's a night when everybody's playing and they're like, you know what, I can't think of anything. It's been a rough day. I'm just going to roll dice for everything. Let the dice decide, which is fine. Then, then you know, let that do it because then cool stuff comes out of that too. So, yep, absolutely. What What about you, Jesse and, and Kurt? You guys have. Anything specifically about tonight's session or? No, I mean, honestly, it's been, uh, I think that uh, Kevin really took the uh, the feedback from the first one, which not, I mean, the first session that we, the first adventure that we did was really good. Super um, fun. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, like, in in just in so much as attempting to more merge it with the with the core mechanics yeah exactly um yeah it, i think it went really well um and yeah i mean there's always when you're dealing with something like not you have non-mechanical mechanics like you said right, right. in Cthulhu <laughs> so it's tough then differentiating those with role play when decisions like that are made so mm. yeah i'm not sure that's i mean there could be like said possible notation in the rules just to be like these are more severe than your run of the mill so but yeah. i think overall i think overall it's blending well okay and no, not to no. be spoiler or anything but no we we got some of the magic stuff later too, so we'll we'll put that through the. Paces. Oh, there we I mean, go. We did a little bit last time, but we'll do a bit more tied yeah. into the you know the discussions we've had separately about combat and stuff like that. So, okay. The, sorry, the sorry, supplement's Kurt. been updated, so make sure you check that out because there's deals on a bunch of stuff, and I okay flush, cool. flush some things out. It's it's different if you haven't looked at it. Cool. What? A, sorry, Kurt. <laughs> no, that's okay. I really didn't have. I really don't have any notes. I mean, it went well. I mean, yep. it now it's at the at the point where it's just. I think it's just more up to the players that are playing the game and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, we knew core worked in and of itself, right? Like that was there was never a question of that. Yeah, There's, right. You know, does sanity work? Does the shock table work? Does a the, the few things that I added mechanically function? And I, and I, I feel yeah. like we've sussed that. I mean, this is our third game, like. I feel like it worked even after the first game. Yeah. Um, and, and sort of we honed in, you know, we, we, we hit different things that we don't normally hit with, you know, when we play with Todd. So like combat is sometimes an issue and like, okay, well this works, this works. Okay. All right. Here's the sticky wicket. Let's file this down and then, you know, reapply for the next one. And one thing I can mm -hmm. say from a macro level, right? So macro is the high one, micro is the small one, right? I always get those confused. From a macro <laughs> level, reading through 
the core stuff and the core Thulu stuff and the magic stuff. There's not a time where I've said, well, how do I do this, right? In Or in game, I'm like, okay, yeah. how the hell do I go do this? So that's that's always a good thing when you read through a set of roles and, and you're like, okay, well, that's how you do it. There hasn't been a time where I've read through those. And, you know, looking at that, then looking and making some changes from what I wrote saying, okay, well, how am I going to do that? How do I fit this into this, you know, this this rule book it, to me, I've never had that. So that's always a good thing, right? Cause I'm sure we've all read <laughs> different, you know, GM books and things. And you're like, Oh, this makes no sense. Or, you know, a <laughs> table and you're trying to come, you know, to me, I've never had that issue with that. It's like, okay, well, I want to do this. Oh, that's how it says to do that. And you know, yeah. it hasn't yeah. been an issue. So. Yeah. That's the, that's the plus for core, <laughs> that's awesome. that's core awesome. and all the supplements that ho hopefully you get added to it. Like it's an easy, pick up and play you shouldn't yeah. have any problems with it no and i think just separately uh, at work uh, last year one of the guys i used to work with used to run a bunch of games that i found out right before he left and then everybody at work found out and that's what i told my boss one time i'm like well when we have an offsite one time we should set up a couple tables or run a couple games this is something and they all you know and then COVID hit, <laughs> but mm -hmm. this is something that you could that no none of them uh, none of them ever have played role playing games before. This is a, this is a type of system you can go in on a day out at, with work people with yep. a, you know a couple six packs and say this is what we're going to do. This is how you play it, mm -hmm. and it wouldn't be two hours of trying to explain it. It's like make your character. This is the stuff you have to do. This is what you have to roll. And I think we could do it really quickly. We wouldn't yep. have issues yep. if we were trying to play D and D or something like that. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. Well, I, I mean, I, we take it a little bit for granted. I could knock out a character in in core or, you know, my core micro core Thulu is the add on in like 10 minutes. Like it's, yeah, exactly. it's more about like, OK, what kind of flavor do I want than it is mechanically actually trying to stat a character out? And yeah. so obviously this is the first time I've played core. I mean, obviously, you guys have played core like for how we say four years or three years or whatever. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. <laughs> But when that first game, when you guys sent me the stuff, I, I don't think I replied back to you. I may have emailed you saying, how many points do we get? But other than how many do we get, it was for someone who'd never seen it before. Yeah, it was easy. It was more coming up. Okay, well, the, it's the, the flavor around it was the stuff that took a long time. Doing a character is that easy. So, yeah. Absolutely. I will tell you, I had the general idea for Michael before going in, but my week has been so chaotic that I never actually rolled him up. <laughs> I, I literally rolled him uh, when I logged on <laughs> and I had, and I had, I had all of his pertinent information uh, within like four minutes. Yeah, exactly. It so. is really quick. So no. super easy. Yeah, exactly. Cool. All right. Does, does, do we, do we do it? Did we cover all the things? We That's did it. it. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you guys are happy, I'm happy. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Kurt has welcome to the WWA, a woodland creature wrestling association. I got the whole. Hey, you got it right this time. Nice. You can find that over on Drive Through, along with Jesse's or uh, yeah, Jesse's uh, creation, Monster Hunt, along with the magic supplement for that. Um, Corthula will be out soon. <laughs> um like i said it's in in well by the time this comes out it's probably ready but if you're watching live soon if you're listening to this podcast or watching this you know a little bit later then it's, it's probably up be able to find it on drive through i think i put a link in the show notes for core micro because you're going to need that to do any of the other stuff uh, so check that out as well um I don't think I put a link for Todd's Patreon, but if you're thinking about a Patreon, if you're not supporting one of these guys, then support Todd before you support Legends because I'm going to do this for Spite. It doesn't really matter. But support indie creators, which I guess we all happen to be too, but support Todd. Just do the thing and yeah. give Todd money. Todd deserves that <laughs> more than we do. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. I mean, this is what Todd does. Like, Todd's a game designer and Right, and all yeah. that kind of stuff and like help those people like we all have regular jobs so like it's whatever yeah i don't know we're gonna go now <laughs> <laughs>
because <laughs> because that's the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. Best Catch ending next. ever. Yeah, mm. just <laughs> throw Peter down. It's, it's, it's probably fine. And now it's time to leave. <laughs>